Okay, everybody's got a fucking podcast. I mean, we have a podcast, so obviously anyone can do it. Wait, this is a podcast? Are you recording right now? Technical difficulties. No, you don't say anything. I'm going to edit it out. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. I put mayonnaise on a pickle. It was not uh, the best, but it might have been the worst. Do I see? I mean, my feet stink, right? Yeah. The Godfather. Part, part two. two. Not The Godfather Part Two, but The Godfather, the second one. Right. Yeah. It's just, you know, a hard thing to, you know, it's the whole thing. Oh, nice. What? You signed in on. Yeah. yeah. That way yeah. I can see your notes and my notes. It's, a, cool. it's a coordinated effort. I just effort. saw the Content Crisis cursor, you know. Yeah. So, that, yeah, that was fun. Uh, now for stuff people watching or listening care about. <laughs> um, so the Godfather part two, we're trying out like a little bit of a structure here today because, uh, we have been told that maybe we run on and, you know, sound like idiots sometimes. That's the goal to not sound like that. So yeah. now granted sounding like an idiot may still take place, but I think the overall structure, you know, if we can uh, sound like an idiot in a purposeful and meaningful way, I think that comes across better within the structure, within the structure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, the first thing now we did talk about the praising it being first. I have a praise it, tear it apart. Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Um, and then sort of a plot through bullet points type deal. Uh, I did put the tear it apart first because I don't have a ton of bad things to say about this movie because yep. I think it's really good. I so, fully agree with that approach on this. Okay. I think for some movies, uh, just to do it justice to make sure we do capture the good parts of it, we'll probably have it flipped where we uh, we open with that uh, that praise and then proceed to tear it down for the whole podcast. But this is yeah. an incredible movie. So. Yeah. So if it opens up and we say a bunch of bad stuff, it probably means we liked the movie. <laughs> and then if we say a bunch of good stuff right up top, it probably means the next hour <laughs> is going to be not so fun for this movie. So um, the first, so if we go tear it apart first, I have the hit on Michael. Uh, just one small thing because it is like there's no continuity we don't have a lot of continuity issues or anything like that it's just mm -hmm. certain little things that i'm looking at right so the hit on michael you know he's standing there in front of the window for a significant amount of time i felt like yeah and then Kay's like oh michael why are the drapes open and then there's and then a long pause. he has a very long pause looking out the window and then and it's almost as if the guy like came up and was like now a little bit <laughs> you know because he has Ample time to, and now granted, he's got decent reflexes. He's he's young still. Yeah, he you got know? down <laughs> quick as shit and crawled over. But but uh, yeah, any assassin you know worth his weight, right? Should uh probably have got Michael. Oh yeah, it it should have been pretty easy. I mean, the the only justification you can really make around that is that like they hadn't gotten a position yet. Like they were rolling up on him at that moment, and that's what you know Michael saw and initially reacted to. Like, that's the only other way around it. If that was I any idiot with a gun, they, they could have taken my cloud easy. Yeah. Also, I don't know that you need the drapes open per se. Because, I mean, obviously you want to see. But if you have a general idea of the layout of that room, mm -hmm. then, I mean, I feel like you could just... Just open. Kind of, like, come up to the window and you're like, okay. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe listen <laughs> in, put your ear to the window, make sure you hear talking, and then give them the blam -a jam there's part of me what, that watches movies that I look at things and I just go like, I'm would be a great murderer. <laughs> <laughs> we feel weird saying that on a recorded line, but you know, you watch some of these movies and you're like, shit, I could do that. I could do that better. Right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I said these dead people breathe a lot. Paolo in the beginning of the movie, Vito's brother. Yeah. He's dying. He's sitting there just breathing and you just see it like, I don't know if it's, I don't know what happens there when you have dead people breathing. If it's like, you know, did you not do enough takes that you don't have a take with them not breathing? Yeah. You know, and because then the hooker that, you know, was killed with the senator, uh, 
Yeah. You know, Covered she was also sitting stuff, there breathing. But yeah. yeah, but like the sheets moving up and yeah. down. She's sitting there breathing. So uh, that's all for that. It doesn't seem like it's a very difficult thing to do. To I feel just... like we could nail a dead person scene, with, which again sounds weird too. Yeah. Just like the murder <laughs> thing. But I, do, I feel like if I was shooting a movie, I could do enough takes. You know, yeah. that's all I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely a, a gripe and a, a, a very simple thing, you know, that you, you should be able to just retake for and get down, but yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, by the, before I fly through online, did you have any of the tear apart stuff? Or no, I'm sorry. You said you did not do your... I, I didn't organize notes my in notes format. in this structure, so my, my small bits of tearing apart will occur during the okay. main notes section. Cool. I didn't have um, a ton, though, so... Gotcha. Yeah, again, it's, it's an incredible movie. <laughs> uh very I think the like goofiest looking scene in this movie would and like all of it looks really good. So excuse me. Uh when the when the Pentangeli hit goes bad, right, and then there's kind of the gang fight outside. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure no one dies in that scene. Like I didn't see anybody laying on the ground. And then Willie Chi-Chi's right there in front of the car, and he's shooting at the car. He looks like he's holding, like, his stomach or something. Like, he got shot already, and he has that kind of exasperated, like, we're still doing this. Yeah, like the look posture on his face. and everything, yeah. And then you have you go from that to a different shot of him getting run over. Mm-hmm. But it is so very obviously <laughs> a stuntman. Like, the hair's different, everything. The only thing that's the same are the clothes. Yeah. Um, and that just so. seems lazy. You think a little bit. It's like, just frame it different to where we can't tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just wear, get a dude with the same exact clothes and general look and just make it happen. Yeah. Don't. It was so very obviously a different guy. Yeah. Like, just the, no question. That that always feels lazy. Yeah. Um, Again, like, probably the only goofy-looking scene in the movie, though. Mm-hmm. So, Excuse me. Uh, how long does it take to smother some stroking out old weak guy? That's all I'm saying on the Hyman Roth hit, Gone Bad. Yep. Uh, yeah. Because I mean, he, he was, was in there for a considerable amount of time. Well... And and honestly, the way it felt like we were prepared this whole time was that like it didn't matter. He was going to die, you know. Like he he you know seemingly fine, and then very quickly it's a oh I got a doctor coming in to see me. Oh I've been you know admitted into one of the hospitals or whatever. You know it's like it seemed like it had been progressing pretty quick. So mm-hmm. it's like I felt like he should have just died naturally anyways. Yeah. Uh, and and we wouldn't and then have had to worry fine. about it. Yeah. Well, and then and that's <clears throat> so I wonder because you know a comment Michael makes when they're planning on killing him for the second time mm. is, you know, he's been dying of the same heart attack for 50 years. So I'm wondering if maybe the stroke was somewhat of a stunt as well. Mm. Maybe Hyman Roth was a little more tactical, <laughs> a little more conscious in that moment than yeah. we think. Right. So maybe it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom goes and has a cigar with Frank Ventangeli at the military barracks the military you know it's heavily supervised yeah there's gated areas gated walkways okay and then they're out there having a cigar and then they finish up their conversation and just somehow for some reason i don't feel like tom could take the cigar out of his mouth and just throw it on the ground like that and have just all the military people be like yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Unless all of them do the same thing and they didn't show a ground shot of just cigars yeah, everywhere. strewn everywhere. Yeah. That's yeah, all. It seemed like an odd thing to address and also just like a, yeah, like don't, don't you want to be a little like discreet? <laughs> don't you want to not want people showing to be like, hey, stop throwing littering. I'm going to $500 fee you. There was so much cigar left though. Like he threw out like yeah, most those, of the cig- they just lit it. It's so big. Those are the fuck around cigars though. Those there was the good so ones. much cigar left. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, just everything about that moment was <laughs> goofy to me. Um, also, not to mention that potentially, you know, I feel like part of the deal with witness protection most of the time is the fact that the witness has agreed to some sort of like guidelines of like you're going to testify, you're going to say, say this, this, and this. You know, you're going to help us out. Yeah. And some time has passed since this case. I mean, Mama's died. You know, Connie's come home. We go through that. He reunites with Fredo. Like, all this shit. So, I feel like he wouldn't still be in 
this place with these same guys, you know, because and you know he's in the same place because those same guys are like, come on, Frankie, why don't you come out here and play hearts? Yeah. And that's when he had killed himself. Uh, I don't know. But maybe maybe that just rolls into, I guess, the implication. They know that if they let him go, that, like, he's going to be killed probably. You know, so it's like a... But isn't that part of the deal with witness protection is the fact that we're, like, we don't give a... Like, we're protect... We're doing you a service because you're doing us a service. We don't care if you fucking get killed. But I think with the publicity of the event so far, it, it just wouldn't really look good from their perspective to then release, you know, a supposed witness, and then that person ends up dead. The implication is is that they were right all along, and then the, the mafia wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I feel like the impression of that, just on, like, the government, on the judicial system, doesn't look good. So I understand still wanting to kind of keep him under wraps and keep him alive at least, um, just because otherwise you lose, I think, in a much more complete way than just him being like, ah, I made some of that stuff up. Yeah. Um, so I, I understand that perspective a little bit. All right. So then um, praise it. I feel like I was just going to skip because I feel like most of my notes are. We're going to praise it praise start to finish it, so. of this whole damn thing. So, uh, yeah. All right. So short. In short, just like plot through bullet points real quick here. Basically, the veto plot is because we have just two stories we together here. Um, the veto plot is the entire family. Di- his entire family dies. He goes to America at nine years old. He's married. He has one child so far. Finucci's a dick. Loses his job because of Finucci. Brings home a pair. Uh, meets Clemenza. Hides guns. Steals rug. Starts Steven. Continues having kids. Uh, Finucci wants a taste of the uh <laughs> the stuff not the the kids just to be clear. <laughs> right he wants money. a taste of the the money that they're the getting action, from the, the money yes uh they whack him well Vito whacks him uh he's well respected in the neighborhood feared starts off all business with Jenko goes back to Italy for business and revenge Michael's story first communion party for Anthony tells Senator to fuck off there's a failed uh hit on him meets with Hyman Roth and Pentangeli um Botched hit on Pentangeli. Senator compromised via dead hooker that Al Neri killed. Uh, Michael goes to Cuba. They make the deal. Fredo exposes himself. Failed hit on Roth. Revolution ends things in Cuba. Legal battles. They win via Pentangeli's brother. Kay and Michael fight. Pentangeli suicide. Roth and Fredo whacked. Michael reminisces the end. And that's kind of what happens. Yeah, a little refresher there. If you, uh, if it's been a while, remember. yeah, if it's been a while. We've all been there. Uh, so, I wanted to do a new thing. We'll do. We'll start it off easy with a uh, bad summary. Did you have a bad summary for Godfather Part Two? Uh, bad summary I was kind of going for was just going to be uh, <laughs> a little abstract. So it was going to be an alternate version of the time traveler's wife. It's Michael in both the past and the present. He's just nice. going back and forth between all these events. Uh, I thought that was funny to That's think good, about yeah. it in that way. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, my bad summary was fishing trip gone wrong. Right. Uh, with Fredo dying in the end there. Um, so our new segment that I uh, kind of like is I feel like when you watch a movie trailer, um, you know they can they can cut these clips up to make it look like any fucking movie. I, yeah, we've can, all been there when we've watched clips. Like I thought it was going to be more about this, and it's complete. Like it's kind of completely the other way. They want it to look a certain way to kind of fool s- maybe the demographics they aren't getting. Exactly. You know, into yeah, you can you can movie. take a couple cuts. You can change a soundtrack, and all of a sudden, you know, The Godfather is a, this very happy family movie of just uh, Italians making it in America in the early 1900s. You know. Yeah. So uh, I had two ideas for bad trailers. Uh, One I thought out way more than the other. Uh, So the one's just going to be quick. But a movie about Cuban revolution, maybe it makes it seem like it's a Cuban missile crisis movie. You know, because of that whole deal, right? And then uh, the other one was a movie about a woman's right to choose and how the patriarchy is terrible. So terrible that when this man's wife chooses abortion, he slaps her, takes her children, and kills his brother, which doesn't make much sense. Yeah. <laughs> but he's just so angry about her right to choose that he had to kill his brother. Yep. The brother's like, what did I do? Ah. I'm smart. You know, you can, like, put those clips in there. 
<laughs> and uh, that one makes me laugh, and I like it. So anyway, yeah. Uh, alternative to one of those, uh, we uh, we just cut all the sections of like the failed uh, like assassination attempts or whatever, and then just add like a comedy theme to it. You know, so we just try and get like some of the quotes out of there. World's that make it worst seem, hitman. Yeah, that just make it seem like it's just a he can't catch a break, and it's just all these failed assassination attempts. That'd be good. I like that a lot. That's good. <laughs> uh, another new one I wanted to do was just kind of so so much of what we do here <laughs> seems inspired by Sean Connery, and I was gonna say, you know, right the segment initially was gonna be right or wrong. Could Sean Connery play a role in this movie? Because he's just so abrasive i feel like and whether he fits in something or not is very hard but then i had the idea why don't we just go like what what just give me hilariously wrong casting for just a couple of these parts right um so i had three um so i had (laughs) sean connery as young Vito. i think is just gold you know it's like I'm making him an offer I can't refuse. Yeah, you know, like, like we we abandoned the accent entirely because Sean wouldn't no bother. Italian, yeah, he doesn't check, like I don't know. That's why I appreciate De Niro so much. Is like he he just dedicates himself to that role, and so like he just commits to talking like this all the time. You yeah. Know? yeah, like he's essentially doing a, a Brando impersonation of Brando's Godfather. You know, what I mean, because yeah. acting is an impersonation anyway. So like Brando's doing this Italian mob guy impression. And then he's doing an impression of Marlon Brando doing an impression. This is fun. Anyway. Um, Kelly Culkin is Michael's son, which is obviously impossible due to the time. But, uh, you know, just doesn't work at all. Just like <laughs> shiny blonde white kid. Like it just doesn't just work. Just completely out of place. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, a little before uh, this, guy's gets his, this guy gets his start. But uh, Sly Stallone is Fredo. You know, yeah. I mean, just like. Hey, uh, Michael, I, I, I didn't I didn't know. I, I, every time I think I have a Sly Stallone, I can't fucking keep it. Um, I was just watching a lot of Rocky, which is why he's on my... And so, hey, Mick. Uh, uh, you know, you like, almost need like something to keep your yeah. mouth from closing yeah, completely you can, you so you can just <laughs> mumble a little bit. Yeah, but just like, yeah. I can handle things. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, one I want to add on to that just because I was thinking about it there because I think about uh, Don Vito, um, Danny DeVito as Vito. <laughs> <laughs> so, but also like abandoning the accent entirely. It's just he's Danny just DeVito. Frank from fucking yeah. Always Sunny. <laughs> that uh, that would be fun. Just the most jarring tra- and like you know Michael can still be Michael. <laughs> yeah, but it's just whenever we do the uh, the the flashbacks, Vito is just uh, Danny DeVito. He's just so small, like uh, just uh, you know, just half the size of everyone he's talking to. It's fantastic, and they don't even like account for it in the camera angle frame. No, he's just always half like half the just... time. You just see the top. You just see his balding head yes. right there. Yeah. Oh man, that's fantastic. Any others? Was that it? that? That was my one. Okay, fantastic, uh, <laughs> fantastic decision. Uh, all right. So if we're in our like if we're into our notes here uh i threw the deleted scenes and such in here so they'll just kind of be weaved in um so yeah uh what i've been talking a lot what do you got for your note um so i i really like the way that it opens in general to where we have like the you know kind of like those credits i guess like scrolling in um and and we have that like still frame of the chair um, I like that that's just kind of the, the opening thought that we, uh, we're starting off the movie with. It's kind of um, like previously on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that worked out well. Um, I liked that um, we, we kind of open up with like just that actual like wall of text kind of explaining the time period that we were in 1901, I want to say. Um, and uh, it, it made me think of the Golden Girls a little bit where it's like, picture it, Sicily, 1901. <laughs> and then, you know, we get the theme rolling her there and, and then yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> everyone's dead. Uh, catastrophe and all that um but i i, I kind of like this intro framing there uh you know it's like oh you know we're doing this funeral or whatever we're kind of setting the tone uh you know they're carrying and then uh we we hear gunfire everyone's scattering around Just drop the casket yeah uh yeah, i felt really bad in that moment because like yeah. you can't drop the dead guy don't drop the dead guy um, and then just the shouts from over the cliff. It's like, your son is dead they killed him murderers murderers yeah 
Um, I, I feel like we just opened up strong. We're really setting the tone. It's like everything is being taken away uh, from Vito at this point, and it feels good. Um, and then I guess we can we can kind of mention the one deleted scene of where you know prior to the funeral, right, is where uh, you know they were uh, uh, sending some men to, to collect him because they were like, or like after the funeral. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, after the funeral. I'm right. sorry. Where they like you know we're, we were going to send some men to, to collect Vito because like ah yeah. you know he'll seek revenge one day. Yeah, just like his brother. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is nice to see, but yeah. So I also like the way the movie opens, uh, just going strong, right? We got child murder right away. Mm -hmm. And then Vito's mom's basically like, (laughs) they go to talk to Don Cheech and he's like, she's like, no, 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 he's not going to seek revenge. He's, he's so, he's so dumb witted and slow. And uh, he's so small. It was like his mom's just like, nah, this dumb little him. bitch. Yeah. No, he's not gonna do anything. But like, I, you understand part of it because it's like, oh, you know, she's trying to protect him, so it's like, oh, he can't. He yeah, couldn't yeah. possibly. He's just this feeble thing. You know, it's just, just a like desperation. The, but I like the sketch concept of like, you know, like, oh no, this dumb little bitch. He can't do anything. And then the kids, like, hey, I yeah. can, I can do, I can. Do, I'm smart. Yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> Like, I could kill him in the future when I grow up and get strong. Yeah, I could do that. I can handle things. Don's just like, yeah, you see, he says he could do it. Yeah. I have to kill him. And he's like, no, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I but- mean, I wouldn't, not you. That's like, it's, it's part of the smart thing. I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a very realistic conversation. It's like, I wouldn't, but I could. I could do it. I could do it. I'm smart. Just like a, 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 a writer's room right? <laughs> as the scene. <laughs> And oh. then when she gets blown away with the shotgun, it's like, it's fantastic imagery. Just like, just a boo, and she's just like, Whoa! Yeah, she flails. Yeah. It, it was good. I, uh, I, I, I'm I so disappointed in her, though, because the lack of commitment to the revenge on her part. Like, it's like, he, he like, what? Just do it right just do there. It. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't even know. You're going to get shot no matter what. Yeah. Kill this man. Yes, absolutely. Um, My next note was just basically that the Clemenza is not here. Uh, I did send you an article uh, this week, which I'm sure you read. Yep. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we can just go ahead and talk about that. Um, so, Richard Castellano, who's Clemenza, and Clemenza was supposed to be in this movie, and then, like, all the uh, special features, behind-the-scenes stuff that I watched, you know, with Coppola. Now, granted, Coppola, obviously, is the one that gets to say his piece and have it be like the you know he's on the dvd right yeah. so he gets to say you know what he, what his version of the events um he says he was negotiating with richard castellano like right up until the shooting started and um of the movie yeah <laughs> not there, was, <laughs> there wasn't any shooting we have to be clear dude all the shooting involved but um but he uh he, he said that he uh, had to cut it off at the time when finally Clement, uh, Clement, <laughs> Richard Castellano's last request was like, all right, well, my girlfriend needs to be able to write all my dialogue. And I'm like, wait, what? Just so, like the most unreasonable request. <laughs> right. And then Richard Castellano, his version of the events is that he never said any of that. Uh, he said it was... Um, the different demands on him as far as like what weight he's supposed to come in at, what weight he's supposed to get to, because I guess, excuse me, there was a, excuse me, there was an, uh, a version of this where he was supposed to play young him, which that would have been seems odd. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, I feel like it's too much of a time jump for him to do that. And so, he just doesn't have that type of like face and build, I think, to really make that sensible. So right, why why would you bother? Yeah, and so then he was saying, you know, so in the article he says he's already lost all this weight; he's down to one ninety. And then he said the script has him coming in at three hundred pounds because he's, you know, older Clemenza. We're getting close to the sixties here, you know, yeah, present day for the movie. Anyway, um, so I, you know. I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle there. You know, if one party completely denies one side of it, then like probably part of it's true, but not as much as like this side's saying. Yeah. Right. That's usually how those things work. It's always a little bit of truth in there. Um, and then what was interesting to me was that he kind of <laughs> had a, he was allegedly the nephew, I believe of like Paul Castellano, who was like a real mob guy. Yeah. Um, 
which it doesn't really have anything to do with what we're talking about here, but it's just <laughs> interesting to me because I love mob shit. Um, and then you kind of look through the script because if they had to do it as if they had to turn it around as quickly as you know Coppola is talking about, which is that part I fairly believe. Um, I feel like some of this Pentangeli shit is definitely supposed to have been for Clemenza, like with the, you know, he's like he was like the big dancing guy at the first, yeah, you know, in the first movie at the wedding and. You know, then, you know, he, he, I can see Clemenza's character coming out to this event and, you know, going like, there's no Italian music, there's no wine, like, what are we doing, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, going up there and then they play Pop Goes the Weasel instead of <laughs> whatever yeah. Italian song he's it, trying to get him to play. We could have copied and pasted him, uh, him in there and it would have been the, the same thing, same impact, you know? Yeah. Made more sense. Yeah. And, um, like, some of the, like, the Hitler stuff, like, you remember when he's, helping Michael out with the uh, with the gun in the first movie. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's talking about Hitler and all this stuff. And then, you know, Tom talking, you were telling me about Hitler back in 33, you know. It's like, it's, you know, feels like a lot of it was supposed to be for, for Clemenza, yeah. obviously. And if they turn it around that quick. And um, another thing Castellano said was just that he didn't like the direction – Coppola was taking like he was also disagreeing with the direction uh Coppola was taking Clemenza which just seems uh, a little bit kind of like excuses at this point but well I mean I could see what he's saying because like if you put if you insert Clemenza in there you know like even if you put the hit on Clemenza like Clemenza's the dude that you know, like uh, Castellano's quote which I don't have verbatim in my head right now, but like he's like, you know, he's the guy that teaches you how to make spaghetti sauce, how to how to kill people. Yeah, he's the mob guy. He's not the one that's going to turn and go talk to the police. Um, which I thought was a valid point, you know. And so maybe that's where some of the disagreements happen. Well, obviously, yeah, are where some of the disagreements happen. And then maybe that's where the whole like my wife writing the lines comes from maybe she was supposed to be like a third party that like listened to both of them and yeah you know, that, that median between the two it's like all right, right well this seems a little out of character let's restructure that but yeah um i mean i wouldn't trust uh because i i mean it, 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 who who was the girlfriend i mean was she a writer or anything like you know what i'm saying yeah. it's like we what what credibility does she have to be writing dialogue for this unless she is like a major you know, investment in the series or something knows all the details and can, you know, write dialogue that fits the character yeah. rather than it just being, I'm going to tell my girlfriend what to tell me to say so I can yeah. make it my own role. You know, I mean, that, I, I don't see that, you know, flying anywhere. Right. And that, that just seems bad shit uh, for me, but yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the Clemenza thing. Yeah. So that's out of the way and we can not have it linger. We can just move on. Um. So we, you know, oranges are still very significant in this movie. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm glad you pointed that out because, like I said, in in the uh the first Godfather wasn't something that ever really clicked for me. Yeah. Um. And then since you pointed it, out, I was like, oh, okay. Like, and now you're watching this one. You're like, oranges, oranges, orange, 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 orange. Seems a lot more prevalent now. Um. So I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because that that was definitely something that uh was completely lost for me on the the first one. Yeah. Um. I'm, I've also been talking again for a long time. So, um, what? Where does your next note take us? Um, so, I, I wanted to touch a little bit on um, uh, when Vito actually comes back into uh, or comes to America on the boat mm. and stuff. Um, so, as him as the the sweet baby child, um, we have that scene that I always find is really interesting, where it's like the in mass like immigrants coming in, mm-hmm. like all the processing stuff, um, just the organization of all of those people and like those different, uh, you know, places people coming from. Yeah. I always think just, you know, the, the view of those always looks super interesting. You can see like a couple of the guys who have like those red hats, you know, just sprinkled throughout the crowd. Um, so I just think of organizing large group of people in those types of ways to show like the different cultures, yeah. um, just as, you know, a filmmaking thing is super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, uh, poor Vito has smallpox. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, I I was stupid. So I looked up uh, what the smallpox fatality rate was in early mm-hmm. 1900s because I wanted to see if it, like, mattered, I guess. Like, you know, oh, he's got smallpox. He'll be fine. Yeah. Um, apparently, between, like, 1901 and 1903, um, uh, in Massachusetts was the only place that I was able to find, like, a stat for 
Um, but it had roughly like a 17% fatality rate. Oh, okay. So I was like, I kind of was hoping it was a higher number so yeah. that it was like more of a, you know, despite all odds, you know, Vito yeah, kind of yeah. surviving through um, some of that stuff there. But uh, obviously he was fine. He made it through. It wasn't really that big of a deal, but I was kind of hoping it was going to be like a, oh, you know, just another thing that poor young Vito by himself had to survive endure. Yeah. Um, it would have been kind of cool and, and fit well, but um, so no. be it. 17 still, you know, still scares you. Yeah. Right? If you're the one with smallpox, you know. Yeah. He said 17. You're like, oh, oh, that's yeah. got to be. we got to watch ourselves well, here. And you got to think, I mean, it's not like they had those statistics at that time. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like it, they could only have just a, wow, we're seeing a lot of people die of smallpox right now. <laughs> like they could have been at the time what? thinking What'd it's like say? a 50%, you know. Isn't that the thing I have? Fatality rate. But uh, obviously I don't, I don't think Vito even would have understood necessarily right yeah he doesn't seem like he well and that's i loved what his mom calls him dumb because it, that is sort of like an against all odds thing you know his mom's calling him dumb and like the just just because someone's quiet doesn't mean they're dumb just yeah. like just because someone who talks a lot doesn't mean they're smart like just because the guy like you can just be the guy that won't shut the fuck up <laughs> Us, <laughs> <laughs> it's us, <laughs> and uh, it's the last of us. You could <laughs> let's not do this again. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you can be the guy that just won't shut the fuck up, and then people go, "Oh, well, they know what they're talking about. They just they're talking a lot. They're loud. They're it's like that doesn't mean shit." Yeah, you know, like he, you know, Vito, the young Vito, again, you know, he he sit he sits he he watches he gathers what's going on. You know, it's just like the Finucci thing, you know, later on in the movie, yeah. he, you know, he watches he's like, oh, I don't like the way that guy runs things, yada, yada. But it's it's very purposeful. You know, he doesn't just open his mouth to have words coming out of it. You know, he just he, he's gathering that information. He's establishing context. He's making decisions in his head um, as these things go around him on how he's going to, uh, you know, handle it, interact, whatever. Yeah. Um, it does seem like when they asked his name, though, he could be like, Vito. <laughs> yeah. Like, just a little bit of that timidness, maybe. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, though, it seems like he adopted the never let them know what you're thinking. Yeah. A little too early on and too, too much of a degree, right? And what's your name? Don't let them know what you're thinking. Don't yeah. let them know what you're thinking. And, you know, <laughs> it, uh, not knowing the book at all, you know, as far as if his father had instilled any of that thought process into him, you know, if he had a Father reason, not in the book at all. Not completely irrelevant. Very good. Yeah. But, you know, even that could have been like a, uh, you know, it's just been instilled in the family or something. It's like a hey, might just, just be traumatized completely because, yeah. his, I mean, in the opening text, it is father, you know, was killed for speaking out against a local. They said chieftain. Yeah. Which was interesting to me, which not not a big word I'm familiar with. I'm yeah. familiar with captain. Yeah. But uh, anyhow. <laughs> maybe it's a bit of trauma you know it's like well yeah. never let them know what you're thinking <laughs> or, or hear what you're saying or anything at all <laughs> or let them see you looking at them yeah. or run hide dip dodge duck <laughs> or let them see your mother yeah. or yeah hide your mother think about that like this dude must be just fucked because i mean his mother just got blown away right in front of him with like comedic effect of like yeah. how far she blew back like it was crazy. And his brother just died at his father's funeral the previous day. This kid isn't dumb. He just doesn't know what the fuck to say or feel or do or anything. Yeah. Anyway. It's like, uh, and what's your name? My dad and mom and brother are dead. Remember when he shot her? Sorry, that was just thinking about that. Just yeah. just talking out loud. My name is <laughs> my name is Vito. Oh my god, the blood! <laughs> the blood! <laughs> They draw my dead dad. Uh, it's 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 Vito. 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 Is, is the name. Vito. You can write that down. It's V I T O. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Definitely not Vito, like the fucking yeah. stupid ass senator says. Uh, he was going. That was intentional for sure. Yeah. The senator go. Uh, Anthony Vito Corleone. Yeah, it's a little bit of disrespect. Like, all right. Like, yeah. And you know later when they're in the meeting, he's like, that guy doesn't like that guy. But, like yeah. that guy just totally went for the disrespect on Michael there. And you don't do that. You don't you don't disrespect the Don. No, you don't. Um, I like the way that he is a complete shitbag, uh, the senator. 
yeah, yeah. Um, in that that whole interaction. Um, it, it felt like the, the whole conversation, like once they're at that, they, or they go into the room and they're kind of having their talk about how uh, he's like, I'm going to give you the licenses, uh, but you're going to pay me all this money in percentages and bullshit. Um, it was very much just like casual villain vibes, um, which just really sold me on the senator as a person in that scene. Uh, I, when he said it, the regular license is twenty thousand dollars, and he was going to charge him two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, you mean over twelve times twelve? So twelve and a half times the going rate for licenses you would like me to pay you? Yeah, is just that's insane. And just yeah, just to set it with like a, and you will pay that. Like <laughs> it, it, like he was just so confident that if he came in and I guess did that like strong arm approach. Yeah. Um, that Michael was just gonna fold, but it's like, no, you're fucking audience. Yeah. Like, this isn't this isn't a foldable chair that you can just he set up and put down. All the bad people kill. He's the baddest one that had all the rest of the bad ones killed at the end of the last movie. Remember? Yeah. Like, no, he didn't watch the movie. Oh, he fuck. didn't watch the movie. Yeah, that was the problem. It's okay. It was, was on VHS. The, was we can issue. we can send it to him. That was the issue. He didn't watch date, the but, last movie. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be funny he's like bringing up stuff that happened in the first one he's like I, I, I didn't see the movie I don't care there, there's definitely a spoof Godfather <laughs> where we where you just he's like yeah remember at the end of the last one no I wasn't here I, for I that didn't, I wasn't in that one I don't know I don't care what do I do now <laughs> well this <laughs> severely fucks things up I like Michael's just cold response back right back not or not cold that's the wrong word just the like I don't give a fuck response right back to him and he goes, I can give you my offer right now, Senator. My offer is this. Nothing. In fact, I would nothing. like it if you put I up would the like fee you to pay for the, the license. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it felt just, just like the biggest dick flex of just like a, I, I don't think you Yeah, the do Senator th- walked in, he put his dick on the table, and then Michael was like, well. <laughs> if you take a look at Exhibit B, where I have the much bigger blacker dick, <laughs> yeah. you'll understand why you're going to be putting up the fee. Exactly. And you will do so with a smile. And I like so much that, you know, Michael, because we're, we're, like, we're part of the same hypocrisy, Senator. Yeah. Like, this is not, you, know, you, you think you're better just because what you do is considered legal? Like, we're both fucking the system and people and every you know what I mean? Like, I like that he points that out, yeah. you know. And the senator just goes like, nah, I'm better than you. Yeah. That's, that's, I don't care what you say with your silk suits and your greasy yeah. hair. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and that, that, again, is, our, you know, the whole trope thing of, like, every movie, every mob march movie, we've had the person that just hates the Italian people. Yeah. <laughs> just funny. Poor Italians. Can't get the <laughs> no, I think they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> these ones are fine, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, these ones are doing good. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and then we'll go, kind of once we get uh, past this too, um, just uh, poor Tom, just feel like he's slowly like getting pushed out a little bit. Like Michael's just like, uh, Tom, you can leave for this. And he's like, okay. Well, he does. I mean, going back to the first movie, like that is the understanding. Yeah, but I, I feel like there's still things that like Tom wants to be involved in at this point that Michael's just like making that decision for him. Rather well, you than see him make the like you see him with the face of like he's just shutting his laptop and he's kind of like what the fuck, and then he gives that like forced smile when before he walks out and he goes okay Mike I'll be out here yeah yeah it's a little bit of it's like when your friend's trying to like flex in front of you and like kind of puts you down a little bit yeah it's like a all right I'll be outside all right. thanks yeah. Dick yeah <laughs> we'll talk. You make the passive aggressive thing in front of like, yeah, well, I heard your penis is small, so that's fun, right? Oh, by the way, your wife called about those dick enhancement pills. <laughs> they should be in tomorrow. Thanks, Michael. Your wife said they couldn't find the extra small cock ring yeah. for that stuff you wanted to do. What do you want me to tell her about that? Oh, you we have could, no response right now? We could custom order the extra, extra small one. If, yeah, there's a guy in Long Beach. He said he can make it, but... He's he's actually the next guy coming in, so he'll he'll measure you up. He's got a form fitted around a needle. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that went on way too long. Uh, <laughs> uh, my note here is the, uh, you know, so Johnny Ola is the one that's visiting. That's the meeting Tom leaves for. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just more oranges immediately. Well, what's that, Rocco? It's an orange from Miami. Guess where the hit comes from? Yeah, Miami. Orange death. 
Anyway. It, it all just makes so much more sense once you have that context. If you, yeah, if Orange you have is that the context. murder fruit. Yeah. If you know that, then you just see the death everywhere. You're just like, okay, so what's that mean exactly? Because there's a point where they're talking about Fredo later in the movie, and Al Neary is just kind of sucking on an orange slice. Yeah. Like it's the thing to do for some reason. He's just he's kind of like he's just not eating it. He's just kind of like rubbing it on his lips. A he's bit. got it like a sucker. Yeah, he's sitting there like it's like it's a fucking slice, dude. Like pick in yeah. or out. Yeah, you know, in or out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, but he's you know they're talking about he's where's Fredo? He's, like, oh, he's in there. Neri is eventually the one that will kill Fredo. So yeah. there, there's this, you can find the significance with like every orange, right? Um. Which I have a weird one with, like, when they have the meeting in Cuba. And, you know, there's fruit all down the table. And there's oranges in those baskets. Like, you know, not the only fruit in those baskets. Yeah. But in but some of them. And so what is what is it there? I'm thinking the meaning is the death of the Cuban government. Yeah. Right? Because then the revolution oh, happens. Yeah. Because I was sitting there going. Because one of the box score stats later <laughs> is, uh, you know, significant oranges. Uh, which I don't count every <laughs> orange in the baskets. I just go. There's about 67 <laughs> significant oranges, but only out of about seven scenes. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just significant orange appearances. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not relevant. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, well, maybe it's relevant, though, because this is you know with the Cuban government. And then, and, you know, because the way that me, it was on the fifth watch that that clicked for me, which is a sad sentence. But. He says, you know, this is the most long, the longest, pro- most prosperous time for the Cuban government. And then I'm looking at the oranges and I'm like, well, that's not significant. And then I'm like, wait, yes, it is. Death of the Cuban government. Death of the Cuban government. Math checks out. Um, and uh, if we're still, I mean, I don't know what your next note is, but I'm still at the first communion party yep. kind of deal yeah my notes go on to i'm um, talking about how connie fucking sucks um yeah do that yeah, yeah. so connie sucks <laughs> oh <laughs> is that it that's no. the, no, no. so <laughs> that's yeah. the note so you know she's uh you know apparently been living la vida loca um which i'm not entirely sure on the translation or if that's being used i'm pretty sure here. that's mexican but that's or spanish rather but. oh it doesn't matter I'm just, <laughs> that's just what came out of my mouth just now so <laughs> rolling to, with it we need google translate yeah here it'll be on screen don't worry <laughs> um but you know so she she's just been living her own life having fun she sees her kids on weekends maybe you know she's just been fluffing about she's on what marriage number i believe this would, if she would marry merle i think that's three yeah um, so she's, she's very much just living life on her own whim and, and coming to Michael for money is, is, is what it seems like the general theme. Basically what she reveals in the end is, yeah. you know, I just wanted to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I just, I very start off with fucking Connie. I'm <laughs> just so frustrated with her in this interaction. Be like, where are your kids? What are you doing? It's like, you come to see Michael before you even see your kids after you've been gone for, I think like two weeks at this point now. Yeah. It's like fucking Connie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, part of that, there's that whole thing. So like that conversation in there where he's standing maybe four feet from the guy. Yeah. Like, I don't know this Merle. I don't know what he does, but yeah, <laughs> just talking about the guy like he's not fucking there. And then, you know, it's like, just tell him you can't do it. He'll understand. Believe me. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if I was talking to someone <laughs> right here? Like, yeah, I don't know who this Jason guy is, but, you know, he's a real fuck up. And uh, just tell him, tell him he needs to leave because he'll understand. Believe me. And I'm just not looking yeah. at you. Like, like, how uncomfortable are you getting in that it's moment? Like, uh, Don Tyler. I'm, like, I'm right here. Guy that you've never met before who's allegedly really powerful. Yeah, just absolutely dismissing you as an yeah. entire entity. You don't know. You're just like, oh, this girl's fun. She likes to fuck and she wants to go on a cruise. And apparently her brother's really cool and powerful and he's going to give her money. Yeah. Except it feels really uncomfortable in here right now because he's talking about me while he's right here and he's yeah, not looking at me. You're, you're kind of looking around and it's like, am I, am I about to get snuffed right now? Yeah, now? Like, like, are they just going to dispose of me? You know, I'll excuse myself right now because I'm sorry. I've offended someone by. Connie, I'm going to tell here. you right now, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Yeah. Mo- uh, the definition of, like, monster in law, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, if, if we can talk about the deleted scene. So, um, with uh, Sonny's uh, uh, daughter, um, which I'm forgetting on her name right now. Yeah, I don't. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Um, but, you know. Francesca. 
Francesca. So stark contrast in it because we we know who Connie is. Obviously, she has now created this history of this behavior. So like Michael has kind of these like dismissive feelings towards her and the way she's living her life. But stark contrast with Francesca, she has this guy come in. Um, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, they've been dating for six Smart. months now. Like, it's a very, like, formal thing. And I think, number one, just because they probably have that better relationship, he says, you know, I feel like a father to her. Um, which, granted, he feels like a father to Connie a little bit, too. But, um, you know, as a father to Francesca, it's like it's a very warm uh, interaction um, is, is is the best way to put it. Um, and just, just very stark contrast. Like, we're dismissing Merle, but then this guy that Francesca comes in with, it's like, and how do you plan to support her? And he's like, oh, well, I'm embarrassed to say I come from money or whatever. And then they, you know, he, he Michael jokes with them a little bit. Um, it's just it, it isn't just that Michael is cold and heartless to everybody. It's that he understands the situation. And I think uh, having that being a deleted scene does it a little bit of injustice to that. No, yeah. Because he is very, like, cold and flat, I guess, in his delivery and interactions. But that was, like, a like more personality, more warmth coming from him um, that I think is significant still. Yeah, I mean, there is I, uh, a category I should have maybe put in the box score is warm moments from Michael because I would say that maybe the – having drinks with Fredo in Cuba yeah. you know, before he finds out that Fredo was the one that betrayed him. Um, you know, the Francesca moment, which wouldn't have been included in that box score because it's deleted. Yeah. Uh, the moment with K two, two moments with K that would have been considered like, you know, personable warm moments, right. Where he's dancing with her. How's the baby? Mm-hmm. And, uh, when you know, right before the shooting, where he walks in there and the drawings on his pillow, and they're kind of talking, whatever. You know, th- these. I guess that's kind of the job now, is that coldness. Oh, and the part with the son before he leaves. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this is just he just has to have this crazy hard, cold exterior. Yeah, you have to close your heart to uh, some of these things to make sure that you. Don't get emotional. You don't lose perspective that you you do the job. Right. And so, you know, just he's uh, uh, 100% of the time. That's what he is. And even when he's talking to Tom about his family. Okay, did you give my son something? Okay, tell me so I'll know what it is. Okay. Can't you give me a straight answer anymore? Was it a boy? Yeah. Um, not, you know, not a lot of personable moments when he's in Cuba either, really. You know, just he's just flat. Yeah. Cold Michael, you know, I, I feel like he even I feel like his dad was even a little more personal, personable in the first movie where I that was one of my notes is like he's surpassed his dad in like, you know, just commanding authority aspect yeah. of of that because he just he's not going to give you anything. There's no there's no like I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Hell, hello. Yeah. Friend, you can't you, you can't know? schmooze Michael. Yeah. It's not possible. I feel like Vito was like slightly schmoozable. Yeah. But you knew where the line was with Vito because he, you know, he still was this, you know, this authority. Yeah. You know, but you still couldn't, you couldn't go too far. Yeah. I mean, if, know. if, if we one to one, you know, compare like our, uh, you know, you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding from the first one, um, the, the guy who I keep forgetting the, um, uh, that uh, Vito the first deals guy? with in the first one, yeah. Like the very first yeah. opening of the movie, yeah. uh, Marigold Bonazera? Yeah. Bonazera. Uh, Bonazera. So, you know, he, he has that interaction or whatever, um, and it's very much like a, I'm just demanding the respect out of you kind of thing as soon as I have yes. it, like we're chill. Um, but, like, it, you, you can, like, see that kind of transition. It's like a, I understand, I'm willing to help you, I need respect from you right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like, okay, I'll take care of it, we're good. I'll, I'll call on you if I need you. Everything is fine. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like it would be as clean of a transition for like if someone came up to Michael and was if like, "Amerigo was like, yeah, I like need you to kill someone for money," and then you might just be thrown out of the party. He might not even be like, he might not even have that grace period of like, "All right, kiss the ring." Yeah, like, you know, because um, yeah. I, I just don't think he has that. Um, uh, maybe like that vision of like how you have to be a little bit dynamic in how you handle people to be open and accounting for people who like maybe they 
you just need to set their expectation. It's not you rule with an iron fist. It's a you need to make sure they respect you, um, but you have to correct them if they happen to disrespect you, kind of thing. Yes, it's like children. <laughs> you have to you have to raise them right. Everybody's children to Vito and Michael, uh, honestly. <laughs> And uh, the little yeah, people Vito, and their problems. You know? Vito knew how to deal with people better. I mean, yeah, you know, you think even in the little flashback scene at the end of this movie, where you know Michael's like, "I did join the Marines." You know, it's like there's there's probably a few different ways to break that news to your brother who's a fucking hothead and is going to get you know crazy mad at about everything. Right? Yeah, and um. You know, Tom's like, we've talked about your future. And then, you know, Michael's like, I didn't ask for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's like a conversation that you have with somebody. You're like, I know you want this for me and you did these favors for me to not do that. But, you know, there's a com- there's conversations. There's ways to smooth things over with people. Yeah. When I didn't you- ask for this. I don't want it. Yeah. But that is just like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, his father was – but, yeah, Michael just commands the respect. So, I mean, obviously his father had it, but yeah, it's like you better with Michael or, like, things might go really sideways for you, yeah. whereas Vito will at least correct you. Michael will give you – yeah, no. Okay, anyway, too long on that. <laughs> All good. Uh, so what do you got next? Um – so I guess just wrapping uh, into like the later part of the night uh, that Alfredo is still a giant pussy. Um, Alfredo? His... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have names throughout all of these okay. for people because I, uh, one, I, at some point I think they're funny because um, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, uh, I don't know, You'll, I'll get to them. I'll read them off as they come in, but I, I people get different names throughout this. Um, but he's just a giant pussy. His, his, his wife is kind of just sloppily dancing around on the dance floor. Um, one of the deleted scenes we see her, you know, they showed up to this party with her being sloppy as shit yep. and like, he's just completely unable to address her in any kind of way. Get does her not respect control. him whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't respect himself enough to like do anything. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it you, you do that comparison. It's like, you know, I, Michael is the big tough guy. Like he runs the family. I am, uh, you know, kind of embarrassed to be showing up like this. You know, both as, like, the older brother, but also that I uh, am kind of getting trampled on by my wife a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, Rocco coming up to him going, you yeah, know, well, Mike says if you don't take care of this, then I have to. And then Fredo just goes, you better. You better, yeah. But, you know, it's 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 still even that respect for Michael. It's that he's like a, like, I'm not going to just do it and, like, embarrass you by just removing your wife kind of thing. It's like, hey, like, can you go tell Fredo? Give him the option. Yeah, he yeah. has he has a chance to make that decision take that control and change something yeah um but then he you know he, he crumbles and lets somebody else deal with it he can't handle it yeah uh yeah so, and then, well fredo fredo just gets the short end of the stick always <laughs> but like also he almost deserves it at points you know like, i i think he does a lot of the time because like he just doesn't he doesn't do enough and he just hasn't had to really learn any hard lessons and like adapt. Yeah. I feel it's like even no matter even if he fails, like it's just taken care of around him for the most part. Yeah. So it's like he just doesn't he doesn't have to make hard decisions, he doesn't have to learn. And it's been his detriment for through both of these movies, so Yeah. Either it fell on Sonny or it fell on Michael, right? Yeah. So like, you know, before Michael is a part of everything in the first one, right? You know, Fredo's kind of got a job, but, like, he's not usually the guy that drives, right? And so then, you know, the guys are shooting dad, and he's like, you know, yeah. he's, like, dropping the gun and everything. And he's just, like, this and then feeble, it's like, sad creature. And then it's like, what now? Oh, well, send him to Vegas where he doesn't have to do any of this. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, how is he going to learn now, right? And he gets sent to Vegas to pretty much be somebody else's bitch a little bit. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> basically um and then on just michael being cold still is you know the whole fredo you know as we're talking about fredo you know like he comments that he's weak and he's stupid to tom yeah you know he's like yeah fredo can't run this i need you to be the don right now you know fredo he's 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 got a good heart but he's weak and he's stupid yeah you know and it's obviously a very cold thing to have your own brother murdered right um 
I mean, we can talk about that now. Or we can talk about that later. It's just a little bit for later, I think. Yeah. But uh, but was Fredo? So obviously, this is where the thing happens. You know, I mean, th- this whole thing is kind of like a mystery of like, well, where did the, you know, who's the inside guy? Yeah. For that, Roth got to, right? And Roth, you know, through Olaf, Olaf Fredo, is is how we got there, right? Um, which I kind of wonder what the logistics are in that. Plan. It's like okay, like what did Fredo have to do <laughs> for said betrayal here? Yeah, is right? this Was like leaving like, doors unlocked? That's is this... the house. Yeah, I'll go in there and open the curtains. Okay, that's it. Yeah, right. Well, and and I mean Fredo actually says like I didn't know it was a hit. Right. Um. You know. So it's like he 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 knew something was happening, but he he was saying like I didn't know it was a hit. Yeah. So it's like uh, number so one. Are we thinking he's too stupid, and he got himself in trouble with it? Or do you think, as he says with Michael over his banana daiquiri, <laughs> um, was he, you know, because he's like, I was mad at you, Mike. So was he mad at him or is he just too stupid? And he honestly, like, what did he think was going on? Are they taking pictures of Mike? Is this a Bond plot? We're, <laughs> you know, going to video Michael and Kay fucking? I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I kind of have to think that it's probably more so the approach of that he was like upset with Michael and that this was kind of a retaliation for it. Because like, sure, he's stupid, but like he's like Alfredo can st- or Alfredo <laughs> Fredo can still do things. You know, like he can still kind of think for himself and make you know those impulsive choices. And I think part of that was a like I, I'm mad at you, Michael. Um, you know, I I feel all this inferiority towards you. You know, I should be the older brother. I should be the one taking it out. I'm I, smart. I'm smart. Um. I, I think it was kind of the I was mad at you and this is like the retaliation for it. I don't I don't think he was like too stupid to say it. Okay. But part of me does think that it's like a, you had to have had some level of understanding. Like when he's like I didn't know it was a hit. It's like what did you think? That's a lie to me. We were going to do. To me, that's a lie. Yeah. I didn't know it was a hit. I think that's a lie. Yeah. What What isn't a hit? Like what What takes that little you level realize of what organization you're in? Yeah. Right. Like. <laughs> Um, it's always a hit. It's yeah. always a hit. So it's like, is that like a uh, trying to like uh, uh, talk it down a little bit? It's like, I didn't know it was a hit. I was just trying to, you know, do some things to, to make sure like deals went through or whatever. I didn't know things were a hit. I don't know. I'm, I'm stupid Fredo. Yeah. Remember, I'm stupid until I'm smart. <laughs> I'm smart. I can figure things out. Um, all right. So, and then I've, I'm just talking about K here a little bit and the Fredo plot. Yep. If you're, when you're watching the first time, I guess if you were a detective putting together clues, right? You're going, you know, Deanna runs out of the, runs outside when the, after the shooting happens and mm-hmm. she's like, they're outside my house. The body's outside my house. Ah, Michael. Um, so if the bodies are outside of Fredo's house, she's freaking out. Mm-hmm. Well, there's how there's convenient your first that clear, they're outside right? of Fredo's house. Yeah, uh, so I'd say that's a pretty big one. Um, and then you, I feel like it's pretty much a sure thing when they're talking in Cuba at the bar. It's like, oh, I was mad at you, Mike. Yeah, it, it seemed like, almost like saying too much with some of that remorsefulness. Yeah, they hit Michael's blind side on that. Where he's, of course, he's not going to be expecting his brother. Yeah. And then, of course, the giveaway is they're at the, you know, old Johnny Breaker Cracker with his cock yeah. show. Uh, which is goofy. It's the oddest place to even exist. Uh, but. but, like, where'd you find it? Oh, Johnny Ola. And then yeah. Michael's sitting there. He's like, it's like fuck, you ah! did. Yeah. I, I was so like, mad was at right Fredo there. in that scene. Um, and I'll, I'll ramble about it once we uh, we get to it. But I'm just like, man. But, yeah, <laughs> he's lack concerned of about it. You know, he's, uh, yeah. So if you're paying attention there, there's all that. And also if you're paying attention, uh, with the K with, with K there, you might not have guessed it was an abortion, but you could probably guess that something like it was a little bit deteriorating Yeah, because you watch it the second time through and you're kind of looking at K when they're dancing or, uh, you know, in the beginning there or whatever, like any of their interactions, she's just kind of like. It almost looks like forced smile there. Like, mm-hmm. how's the baby? Like, like I'm very much eh, just a passenger. He's sleeping and, inside me, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and they they even have the conversation too, where it's like, a you told me in five years' time that the Corleone family yes. was going to be legit. It's been seven years. 
Like yeah. it's it's I, I feel like that just like the oh you're saying that to Michael yeah. <laughs> like you must be upset uh, yeah but yeah I, I felt like just in that conversation they kind of had throughout that um, that you could kind of feel like she's a little fed up a little like I don't I don't think I want to do this anymore well and then that deleted scene which again would have been another one yeah was you know after the yes for Francesca to set the engagement date or whatever. Um, you know, she runs out and she's like, Oh, uncle Michael's the best. And Kay kind of has this moment of like, hmm. don't say it. Oh, that's lovely, dear. You know, it's, you kind of see that in her face where she's like, swallow your tongue, swallow your, don't, don't. Now's, now's don't. not the time. Bite, now's bite, not the time. Swallow your tongue. Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. <laughs> you know, um, but the, uh, fuck, I was going somewhere with that. Uh, fuck. She being upset with Michael, wanting to leave, not saying bad things about Michael. Francesca. Oh, the fight on that, like, there's a little bit of Skylar White vibe there with me where, like, I get a little like, eh, come on, <laughs> you know, where she's like, he told me that five years ago. It's like, do you think it is easy as fuck yeah. to just move everything legitimate? Like, you know, now this guy is over here like, you're going to have to pay 250000 for a gambling license. It's like... You think I can do that legally right now? <laughs> this is so fucking complicated. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. I said five years. It's complicated. Yeah. Like I'll I would just, I would just freak out. Like I don't know. Maybe I'm just 100 percent transparent about everything. Yeah. Which would be bad because I'm like, if I was a mob guy, you like, have I, to just be so just like, nope, can't know about vague. it. Yeah. Which is always, almost always the issue in any of these mob things why there's a disconnect between the husband and the wife because he can't tell basically this whole side of his life yeah you know yeah. um what do you got next i've been uh so i just kind of finishing up the uh like when uh michael and Kay are back in their bedroom um and the the room gets blown to shit um, so his reaction time being just absolute dynamite and, and ducking and you know coming over to the other side of the bed um, but I, I, I guess I didn't really pay attention to it. Uh, but you know, and, and watching it through this time, I was like, he like pulls K off of the bed. Like she was like kind of trying to get off it's of like, it and like down off to the side. Like he pulls her off the tuck bed and roll, bitch. And he gets on top of her. Like yeah. he, he still like does, I think that like protective thing there. Um, and if you want to call that, uh, maybe one of those warm moments too, yeah. where it's like, he's, uh, you know, he, he's still actively trying to be in the way of the bullets. It is very much Kay who doesn't love Michael anymore. Michael yeah. was very much interested in still being married. Yeah. The ter tipping point for him was the whole, I had an abortion, Michael. Yeah. You know, that was very much a tipping point for him. Uh, but he very much always cares. Yeah. You know. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm not sitting here victim blaming over here. Like, <laughs> I, I very much understand why Kay's like, no, nah, I'm good yeah. on all this. Sorry, I'm good. <laughs> but, um... Uh, then we're kind of getting after all that. Do you have any more like while we're still, uh, just the quick of, I love the, uh, like, you know, we're, we're on the compound. They got all these staff rolling around and stuff. So I love the, the video game, like nature of like the alarms are off. The dogs have been released. You know, people are scrambling. We have around. dogs apparently. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, I, I, I found that just to be, like, an interesting thing because we haven't done a whole lot of, like, the, uh, you know, widespreads around the compound. It's usually, like, here's the building the thing's happening at. We don't really pan across it. And yeah. then it's just like, okay, we got this big-ass place. We got dogs. We got all this staff. The it's, dogs I, I, cracks me up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, how many? Sorry. Oh, it's you? Okay. Yeah. Um, the dogs thing cracks me up a little bit because it's like, how many situations are we going on manhunts over here? Yeah. You know, like this is like, you know, the, the mall as they called it in the first one, you know, in long Island, like this is a pretty enclosed kind of thing. Like no, you know, no one really gets in to do any mischief. It's, it's kind of known. And so like how many manhunts are going on within these walls you that we have specific dogs to be released <laughs> you know what I it's mean? It's not a police do. force. Yeah, it's the mob. <laughs> well, you got to think dogs in general too, as kind of the alert and alarm system on their own. You know, right. if, if they're well trained, if they see anything, hear anything, they're going to start barking. But it anyways, was literally but, yeah. like the release the dogs, and a thing release comes the up. Hounds. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's so specific. Anyway, but. Um, and then I started thinking about just the payroll involved in places like this. I would love to see that end of month report. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the house always wins with gambling, so I mean, yeah. they're they're doing all right. Oh yeah. 
Um, uh, and then my, my next note is uh, Don Tom. Okay. So um, just the only after the party, like after we're out of that scenario, or I guess it's technically before the shooting happens. Um, you know, the thing I just thought of on the shooting was if they're shooting in from like, I don't know if they come I don't know if they move when they're shooting in Michael's window, but uh, the shooting angle I feel like should just be at Michael, probably hitting the headboard, maybe the bed. Mm -hmm. But then the mirror is on this wall, like kind of away. So that that's more of like a straight on firing angle. So if they're at a vantage point, I feel like the bullet shouldn't really hit the mirror. Or if they were standing right out the window, they probably should have been able to hit Michael. Yeah. But, okay, anyway. A little bit of an inaccuracy, but, yeah, just like, hey, we totally. just need some shit to be shot. Yeah, well, well let's not be a dick here. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so, right before the shooting happens is where these deleted scenes are supposed to be. Uh, it's Al Neri kicking Klingman out of said casino. The Klingman dude they're talking about, you know, Nyman Roth supports getting Klingman out of that casino, so you can take advantage it's the one where they need the license for from the corrupt senator and then it is uh fabrizio from the first movie the one who betrayed michael and got apollonia killed um he has a pizza shop in america now and there's a car bomb in his car fittingly and that's how he dies so very uh, good sweet revenge yeah so love to see it uh yeah i'm in uh i'm in veto time now too so go ahead uh oh uh well i i had a uh, don tom and then i also wanted to um complain about uh sleepy kids so uh michael is talking to his son anthony um and the kid's supposed to be like kind of sleepy and uh i i hate the way it's, it's this is a stupid rant but i i hate this fucking kid because he's like he's kind of like in this weird kind of like curled position his arms up his head's kind of crooked and he's He's talking in this sleepy voice. I fucking hate it. I hate things like this. I hate sleepy kids. They look stupid. They sound stupid. I think child actors need to do better. Well, it's because um, they just, are I, stupid. I know. I just, I hated this kid so much just watching this. I was like, I just hate this kid. He's just like, Dad, what's going on? You're going to be mad. I was like, shut the fuck up. Um, I mean, can you think of some of the goofy shit you might have done as a kid, though? No. Like no nothing, no, okay. not a single. I I was an immaculate child since day one. Well, you still are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just like you know, like you, I don't know. I guess just like with the little brother, you know, he's just like I remember my little brother doing such weird things, you know, where he's just kind of like, like he's asking something, and then all of a sudden he's like, you know, like it's like, will you just, sit up straight, boy? Yeah. Kids just, especially when they're like, they gotta, they gotta deal with an authority, yeah. which, you know, dad's always the authority, right? Especially in this family, yeah. right? With He's Michael. The biggest authority. Um, so, you know, like, obviously there's that kind of like, I'm a little actually kind of shy to talk to you. Dad. A little bit of that like, thing. uh, yeah. submissive yes. kind of thought process going like, on. Like, I mean, I have these things I'm going to say, but if you have something to say about them, dad, I am not. That's fine. Yeah, yeah like I'm I, I, I was stupid. I didn't I'll, I'll abandon anything I'm about to yeah. say if you tell me differently, Dad. <laughs> I, I hold no strong feelings towards <laughs> anything I've just said. If you don't like any, especially of it. if you have opposite strong feelings, <laughs> I'm I'm very afraid of you actually right now. <laughs> if you could tell me what to say, that'd be great. Uh, you have a script for this <laughs> conversation, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's the, definitely the vibe I'm getting from the Michael Anthony. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we're in yeah. Uh, 1917. Yeah. So, um, he's got a little bab, a shabby pad and a baddie bad is what I opened up with. Cause the, the scene is him and his like little apartment with his wife and the child, you know, yeah. and that's, that's, that's my, uh, my opening thought real quick. Do you know mama Corleone's name? Sure. Don't. Okay. So this was just something I thought was funny because I feel like I, I actually watched for it in number one. I did not watch for it in number two. It, very easily they could have said her name at some point and I missed it. I should have watched for it in number two. You'd think I would have with how many times I watched it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, they never say her name in number one. And I'm pretty sure not in number two. It's Carmela. 
I feel which I like only, I remember hearing that though. But see, but I, I, only, I would have never attributed that to being her name. She's the only mama. reason it's familiar to me at this point is because I have read it in cast lists. Mm-hmm. When I go, who played this? Oh wait, who played this? And I see like Carmilla Corleone, and I'm like, and I stop for a second because I go like, who the fuck is Carmilla? You mean Mama? <laughs> <laughs> you mean Mama Corleone? Because I have not heard of this Carmilla bitch. Yeah, which then makes it even funnier that uh, Tony's wife is named Carmilla in Sopranos. So moving past that, um, I love Vito. I love De Niro. I love Dynamite. everything that goes on. Um. And it is uh, it is so cool to see just what makes him into Godfa- the Godfather. Yeah. And he even has some of the traits early on where, like, things don't make him nervous early on. Like, he sees this Fenucci guy, he's like, whatever. Yeah, right? he's very unfazed, like, unworried. They go to that show, you know, where uh, Jenko's like, hey, look at my sweet, you know, like, okay, you, like, you think she's hot, okay. Yeah. And he's like, let's go backstage and meet her. And Vito's like, whatever. Um, and then there's, you know, he's, you know, Finucci's threatening the girl that Jenko thinks is so hot backstage, right? And, you know, Vito's just staring. Yeah, he's just It's watching. like, he's like, oh, uh, another, there's another play back here, <laughs> you know? And Jenko's like, hey, what are you doing? That's Finucci, you know? And he's like freaked out. Yeah. And Vito's just like, what? Like, what? you know, it's mob he shit. has... <laughs> He has no nerves because he's he watched his mother die. His brother got shot up on the hill. They dropped his dead dad. Like he just no nerves. Yeah, doesn't like he's seen it all. What could possibly happen in this room that's going to shake me right now? Does nothing. Not, give not a, a fuck. single fucking. Thing. I will stab that guy right now. Like I'll just, stab her. I'll, I'll stab. I'll kill her too. Yeah. I mean, depending on what he he's paying. Yeah. Uh, you know, his mother called him dumb. You know, he's been through it all. Mother mother calls him a dumb little bitch, gets shot with a shotgun immediately. Like, it's, you know, this guy doesn't give a fuck. And uh, I feel like he's got a lot of... So This all goes together. It's a <laughs> lot. But, like, so he's got a lot of disdain towards Don Finucci, as we talk, kind of had covered already. Mm-hmm. He wields his power very irresponsibly. He's, you know, he's just very the much way he just rules. a bigger thug rather than like a yes. person of power yeah like these bad guys when they um ascend right they get like classier yeah. you know and then you have people between whereas this guy he's like well that's not the way you do it like you could tell Vito's watching him like this, this isn't the way you do it you don't do it like that yeah you don't take from italians you don't you know what i mean you and so there's all that he's like, just Vito, already have the mindset of how you should be running this operation. Yeah. It's and uh, and then there's the deleted scene where we see so fanucci has got this gnarly scar throat snake, scar, right? Yeah. The deleted scenes and it's kind of included in the book, um, because we do tell the early Vito story in the book. Um, that is one of the just the only story that's not like in the book that we've seen so far is the <laughs> Godfather three and which is just garbage and <laughs> We're still going to cover it, but, you know, it's garbage. And um, the uh, Michael storyline in this movie. Um, but that that's a whole big thing in the book um, where he sees him. I, I don't think he witnesses it. They just kind of tell the story of Finucci getting his throat sliced. Sure. And then, you know, they make it a very big point in the book about, like, how he's, like, holding the hat, you know, so the you know, the blood doesn't get on his suit. He wants to catch the blood in the hat. Um, and Vito is just kind of like, oh, this fucking vain guy. Like, he cares about all the wrong shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, fucking stupid. Uh, so that's the deleted scene is, you know, Vito sees it. And then he kind of, like, there's, the like, these stairs and... There, there, there's no solid anything. I guess Vito's like sort of in the shadow, but it's daytime. Yeah. And he just like steps between this like fire escape and the end of the stair railing. Yeah. And, you know, I guess that's supposed to hide him from Finucci seeing him, which didn't which Finucci make basically sense. looked like directly at him, but just like he's staring up, like he's like yelling at the windows on the upper floors, like, help me, help me. So. Maybe that's why they didn't take it out, because, like, as far as that goes, it's like, what the fuck? Why didn't he see him? Yeah. Um, but I do feel like I'm okay with that one not being in, I guess. Yeah. Just because, like, 
I mean, it's cool to see how he got the scar or whatever, but yeah. whatever. If if I read too much into that, I kind of look at that as a little bit of uh, Vito scene, uh, kind of like the insignificance of Don Fanucci. Um, so in uh, in my names that are uh, <laughs> not right, so he was Don Fettuccini in my first. I dig it. Uh, lit there. Uh, everything might be pasta based, maybe. It fits. Um, but uh, so he, uh, it, it, it's it's just a man, you know. It's he's not he's not conducting business the way he should. You should be this upper level guy. You have people for this thing. Don Fanucci is, you know, he's supposed to be the top of his food chain, quote unquote. But he's out here uh, trying to correct the behavior of these like younger thugs, these teenagers, these yeah. kids. And he, and one of them gets him. Yeah, one of them gets him. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that right there is just the very like the the big scary Don Fanucci that everyone cowers in, and pays money to. It's like he's just this one man um, that like oh, three teenagers almost took out. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and, and I, I feel like if I read into that too much, that's like a very much of a uh, no, I, I Don Fanucci looks so small to to uh, Vito in that moment. I think I think it's the perfect thing to read into it. Sure. So I think I mean you know. But I do want to say uh, uh, being called the Black Hand is one of the coolest job titles you could probably have. Yeah, we all aspire for it. Yeah. Um, and then just a couple more of the deleted scenes in the uh, early, the veto stuff. Um, <clears throat> so that happens. Then we have uh, a short deleted scene where it's it was if included, it was a sort of homage to uh, Francis Ford Coppola's father and grandfather. His grandfather, Augustino Coppola, uh, was a gunsmith, and so they get weapons from that guy. And then um, his son, who is, you know, Francis's father, um, he uh, he was a, they say, a, a flautist is the word. I mean, I guess that's what you say when someone plays a, fl- a flute. I thought it was a flutist, but. A yeah, flautist, I mean, sure. I mean, maybe it's pronounced that way, but there's an A in there, mm-hmm. so that kind of threw me off. Fluticino. <laughs> Fluticini. Fluticini. Um, <laughs> Everything is possible. This guy's a Fluticini player. Um, but, yeah, apparently his father was a renowned uh, fl- flutist, flute player for the <laughs> NBC Symphony, symphony and uh, he did some composing work as, for movies, and he's made musical contributions. Not He wasn't the composer for like any of these Francis... Francis's movies, but made contributions for different parts of different movies, sure. and so that's kind of cool. And um, if it would have been in the movie, you know, you got kind of some fact within some fiction there, uh, which is cool. And uh, but yeah, there's Dilly Zane there in the warehouse. The guys giving him guns, and he's like, "Hey, come play your flute, Carmine." Oh, and his father's name is Carmine. I don't think I mentioned that. But uh, and then after that, they stole the dresses in Clemenza's. Uh, selling dresses, and he, you know, goes and gets his nut with some girl. Yeah, banging <laughs> uh, housewives. Who's uh, he's gonna give him give her two for the price of one? If you know what I mean. Yeah, she can get two kids for the price of one here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you what do you got next? Because I got more deleted scene stuff with uh, Hyman Roth and whatnot. So. Uh. So yeah, my my next thing goes into uh when Vito loses his job and he's talking to the <clears throat> grocery boss man. Um, I thought that was kind of a uh, a nice tender moment, and he's telling him he's like, "Oh, you know, you've been like a father to me since I've come here. You know, gave me the job. Just the extremely understanding that uh, I have to give this job to uh, Fenucci's. It was his nephew, right? Yeah. Um, that I got to give it to uh, Fettuccini's nephew. Um, <laughs> and you know, the the pride. He's like, I'm not even going to take the groceries. Like, yeah. it's fine. I don't need it. I'll figure it out. Um, and I, I, I felt, I think one way about it the first time I watched through this where I was like, Hey, just take the thing. It's a nice gesture. Just accept the gesture. Yeah. Um, and then I take a look back at it to where it was like a, kind of like a respect and like, you've done enough for me. Mm. I don't, I don't need this. It's fine. Um, you know, and then that being a little bit more of a pride thing. And, uh, uh, I guess maybe also like the favors thing too. It's like, Hey, you know, you don't, you don't have to do any favors for me. You know, you don't, you don't owe me anything. Yeah. Um. I just thought that was a uh, kind of an interesting scene. Yeah. Um. And then I just like uh, I I find young Clemenza just just very weird and, and fun. I enjoy it so very this, much. Yeah. yeah. He's just such a uh, I don't know. He's he's just fun to watch and and see him talk and stuff. And they go and break into the house and you know are moving the stuff to get the rug or whatever. 
just the playing it off is yeah. what gets me. You know, he's like, ah, he's going, not home. Didn't even of leave us the key. Bitch. Yeah, yeah. He's like, ah, he won't mind as he fucking is picking the yeah. lock. It's like, what? But like, yeah, it's the uh, <laughs> and like, vetoed like it senses like he's he sees it right away. Like, uh, no, he's kind of looking around. He's like, come on, come on. He's like, listen, right, but let's see where this goes. Yeah. Help me he, move he this table. He still happily took that run. Yeah. <laughs> Help me move this table. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cop shows up. Clemenza just pulls out a gun ready to right. blam a jam. Okay, so this is wrong. This is bad. This is a steal. This yep. is a steal job. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that that whole scene I just thought was, was fun because it's like the, oh, I'm trying to play it off, but then the cautious looking around. It's like, oh, has anyone seen me break into this place? Yeah. Good. Ah, all right, let's go. Can anyone place me here? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there's the Hyman Roth deleted scene uh, with uh, kind of after Vito, you know, does the Finucci whacking and all that such things, those such things, right? Um, but Vito's the one that gives him his nickname. Uh, he comes in and you know, Clemenza's like, "I got this guy." You know, where where he's like, "Hyman, I'm Hyman Sachowski," and you know, <laughs> Clemenza's like, "We're gonna call him Johnny Lips." Yeah. Uh, which makes no sense. He's like, he's like, he's like, who's your favorite guy in the world? He's like, oh, Arnold Rothstein, which is kind of a jump ahead. Or, well, behind in the movie, but ahead to real life. <laughs> <laughs> However the hell that works. Uh, that, you know, Hyman Roth tells Michael that, you know, I've liked Arnold baseball ever since Arnold Rothstein fixed the World Series in 1919. Um, which I should maybe looked up Arnold Rothstein, I guess. But moving on. Uh, so that's uh, apparent. So he's like, "Oh, we'll call you uh, Hyman Rothstein." So apparently, he dropped the Steen at some point. Yep. And uh, and uh, okay, yeah. So that's the whole delete scene, which is funny because then you look in some of the those shots when they start the olive oil business. Um, you know, he's uh, he's one of the guys that's like grabbing the sign with them, and, like hanging up the sign yeah. and everything. Uh, and he's sitting there in another deleted scene so yeah the whole With, thing. without the deleted scene he's just a random he's just a guy guy he's just staff he's not so to me like i think the hyman roth thing should have been included but i think when you're three hours and 20 you're probably just cutting every little yeah it's a little bit of context and it doesn't we already know that they work together we don't need to know like oh well he came in and i gave him a different name and all that yeah i just would have liked it you know because otherwise it's like oh i guess he's just Excuse me. I guess he's just this guy that works here. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all I got on that. Did I include the... Oh. The other thing I had to say about Hyman Roth was just that um, he, uh, in real life, is it is very obvious he is very much a equivalent character to... Um, Meyer Lansky, who was are you familiar with Meyer Lansky at all? Not he at was, all. Um, he was he's called the mob's accountant, oftentimes. Okay, and he was a a big a big deal as far as he had like almost everything to do with, um, you know, getting the casinos started in Cuba, which then becomes a big problem with them getting kicked out of the casinos when the revolution happens and Castro takes over, and so that's a whole thing, uh, which is a lot of the plot with um, Kennedy getting assassinated. He was supposed to help them get back in the, into the, um, that's why the Bay of Pigs happens. That's why, and the mob's essentially involved in the Bay of Pigs. And it is, it is a whole it's a lot. fucking thing. Um, but, you know, it, like Hyman Roth tries to go and take refuge in Israel. Um, you know, Meyer Lansky did the same thing. Uh, got denied, had to come back. Didn't get shot at the airport by uh by Rocco Lamponi but um he, you know all that all those things happened to him he does have money hidden somewhere that they never could find sure um so very real life um equivalent there and uh Bugsy Siegel would be kind of the Mo Green character I believe uh but we'll get all into that like really in depth maybe next march when we do the irishman um if we're still around (laughs) uh but yeah so anything else 
uh, there? Uh, as far as well, I mean, just whatever you got next. Yeah. Week. Well, this so far, I mean, that's, that's stupid. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Anything uh, else? Okay, uh, let's call it quick. <laughs> yeah. So it, uh, you know, we uh, uh, come back to the the present time. Michael rolls up and uh, has that conversation with Hyman Roth. I like that uh, Michael parks on like his only patch of grass up front and just completely ignoring the driveway. Yeah. Um, I thought that was just the most disrespectful shit in the world, and maybe that's normal. But. It seemed like a routine thing, yeah. <laughs> but I just reason, I'm watching that, and I'm like, the wrong. only plot of grass, you know, outside of his main yard. It's like the only like side patch, and you're just gonna like park your car on there. It looks wrong for yeah. sure. It, he did it like it was really normal. <laughs> yeah, it, it had really to have been wrong. just yeah. like the, the alarm in my head is going, "What the fuck are you doing? Get off the lawn!" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking, Michael? Yeah. Um. But no, I just I enjoyed the uh, the conversation there. I enjoyed that like his wife just uh, all the wives are just you know either completely oblivious or semi oblivious to all the implications of these things. You know yeah. they they close the door. They you want turn a tuna the, sandwich. They turn the TV up. You know and she just like barges in, turns it down. You're yeah. gonna go deaf in here. Yeah, I just uh, I I just love seeing stuff like that where it's like everybody is doing it. You know you your wife can't know nothing. Yeah. Um. So I just, uh, but I, I enjoyed that interaction between the two and a little bit of the uh, feeling out the conversation to kind of see what Hyman Roth is going to relinquish his, and you know get a feel on. It's like, oh well, that's where's he at with some of these things, you know? Well, the fu- I mean, it's so interesting to look at that conversation to where, you know, I, like I know the first time I watched the movie, I took nothing from it, you know, and then Michael's all of a sudden in yeah you know, New York talking to Frank, and he's like, you know. And he's like, Hyman Roth tried to have me killed. And I was like, you got all that from that? <laughs> he was like, hey, you pay attention to the football game? And like, you know. They, yeah. Like, it seemed a little less. Heard you had some trouble. And then I guess, you know, then you're like, well, how do you get that from that? And you're rewatching the scene. And you're like, okay, I guess I. He's kind of feeling it he, out. And How do you feel about Frank? But I think the giveaway is when he's like, well, how do you feel about Frank? Frank Batangeli is a dead man. How do you feel about that? And, you know, he's like, he's small potatoes. And I I. I it's the little he wouldn't subtleties. look at him when he said that right. either. You know, yeah. it's like he's he's starting to eat. He's like, I eat small potatoes. You know, Michael's my. The, it's it's so interesting that you're getting all this from the little subtleties of these people talking to each other, and it, somehow it's this big chess game. Yeah, and you know, you think Hyman Roth maybe isn't onto it, and then you know the whole Pentangeli thing happens, and then Pentangeli is testifying in court, and so is uh, Willie Chichi. And you're like, oh, well, shit, you know. Yeah. Um, Roth is also playing chess. You know, he, you know, it was almost like he, you thought maybe he w- didn't even know there was a game going on. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no, he's playing chess. Yeah. It's good. Um, so it's just, it definitely takes multiple. You're not, like, you will not get everything out of this movie with one watch. No. Like, there's, sure. there's no way you could. Yeah. But, um, Again, because it's an incredible movie, you should go back and watch it multiple times. But yes. um, no, I mean a lot, lot of value on that second watch through, and it's it's like with any of these other kind of uh, you know where there's people behind the scenes, you know there's double crosses to be had. Um, you you never get that on a first watch, and you always pick up on so much more of those clues, context, all of that. Um, you know, once you go back through, yeah, it's fantastic. My favorite Michael quote in this movie is. Uh when he's talking to Frank Pentangeli. Yep. Go for it. <clears throat> and when he says, you know, he goes from this script. He's like, he's like, you know, they tried to kill me in my home. And Frank's like, yeah, I almost died myself. And he's like, in my home. Yeah. In my bedroom where my wife sleeps. And then he gets, it, it goes like real quiet all of a sudden. He's like, where my wife sleeps. Where my children come to play with their toys. Like he almost isn't talking at the end. Yeah. Where my children come to play with their toys. It's just, I don't know, just the line execution by Pacino there, it, it just, the way he chooses to do it, it's just so interesting. And then, as we've talked about before, like with the subtitles, you know, you pretty much like put the script in the, yeah, you know, in the in there and just let it be. And if actors changed anything up, you know, you see it because you hear what they you say hear one and you thing see versus, what's yeah, see what's read. Um, and so some of the choices by Pacino on what he's saying you know like play with their toys like with their toys is not in the subtitle it's yeah. when my children come to play so my children come to play with their toys I don't know I everything I just like everything about it it's he's he's still got the 
Pacino's still got the range because, like, there's he reaches a point in his career where he's just this guy. Yeah, you know, like he's, he's just always this. He's up. everything is ever, you know, <laughs> where and he's always got a gruff later. I don't know if Scarface fucked him up, you know, because he was doing Tony Montana and the Cockroach. Yeah. Right. Which I, I don't know what accent that was, really. I can't do things on command sometimes. But um, it was just it, he still had the control of the range. And I feel like later he kind of loses control of his range and his voice is a little fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 maybe it's a little bit of a choice too. It's like I, I think in in this scene, it's a very good job of how uh, I guess like flat of a delivery he is throughout all this. He doesn't really have those spikes, you know, where like he he you know loses himself. And I think that's the character doesn't often lose himself. Um, but yeah, just like that that intensity of where like he's he's losing himself in that moment in that emotion a little bit. You know, I'd, I'd imagine in his head, you know, when planning out this conversation, he was still going to be cool and calm and just deliver the information. Um, and it probably got away from him. And that's that's how I felt with it. And that's why he kind of uh, reels back on the end of that. It's like, where my children play with their toys. Yeah. I, I think that's part of it. And just to see him lose himself in that emotion. It's like he he is actively keeping himself and his thoughts and feelings in check and how he uh, expresses himself to other people. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like that, that was really good to see. Yeah. Uh, let's do a short break so we don't get burnt out on this and I can go pee and stuff. Sure. Yep. We're back. Okay. Everybody's peed. Everybody's got the blood flowing. And uh, we're back on Godfather Part 2, Part 2. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's an important distinction to make here that um, peeing and blood flowing are two separate interactions. Um, we don't have medical health issues where we're peeing blood. I just feel like that, that needs to be Speak made Speak for yourself. Okay. okay. You <laughs> should talk to somebody. <laughs> no, we're good. Um, all right. So, my, I don't know what your next note is. Mine is Fredo and his banana daiquiri. Um and the the whole interaction between him and Michael. Mm -hmm. What do you have next? Uh, so I, I had a little bit of a chunk between I guess like uh, um, the hit on Frank. Um, and then uh, a little bit of that interaction with the senator as well. So, cool. um, as far as the the thing with Frank, um, I just uh, I I guess kind of covered in the uh some of the comments you had where it was just a little awkward in the, the presentation, like the shootout afterwards or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought it was kind of odd the way that um, the like bartender handled like the interaction once like the cop came in, um, you know, it's like it, Frank's getting strangle holded in the back there a little bit. Cop comes in. He's like, Hey, what are you doing? Like you open or closed and yeah, hey, I just came in to clean up a little. It's like with like eight guys like, in, hanging out. I mean, I don't know if the cop had seen like these other guys, but like, obviously they'd been had and it was like something was going on, but it's like, wouldn't you lock the door? Like if you're not open, you don't want no one coming in. Yeah. It's like, wouldn't you have locked the door? You would have thought, I mean, that one guy's standing there and he looks at the bartender like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like why you can lock the door too buddy yeah um so i thought that was kind of interesting um when uh they were talking um he was like you get like a he was talking about a c note like the i, I find this disrespectful what is a c note if i any remember idea? right it's money <laughs> But I gotta look it up. Okay, I I it, you, you it looks, go while I yeah, yeah it, it kind of looked like it was hundred dollar bill. Okay. Is what is immediately showing up. So I mean that's fine. I, I I guess in that context I didn't understand if it was more of like a like there's information here or if it's like a oh the C in C note refers to the Roman numeral centenary. for a hundred, which was printed on hundred dollar bills and can also refer to a century. Perfect. Okay, so that that, that makes sense. It, it it didn't click anything in my head for it when it was said. So I was like, is this is this just money? It kind of looked like money all folded up, but yeah, I want to make sure I wasn't missing that there was like more of a like uh. You know, like it was a check or like it was a, you know, order for something or anything like that. I don't know. Yeah. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, but I also just love how, like, catastrophically bad that whole interaction went down. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just, it, it, it seemed very, like, I know you can't plan for everything, but it just seemed, like, so unprofessional, I guess, start to finish. And, like, I understand it's like, uh, maybe we shouldn't be killing a cop or something, but it's like, 
basically the strategy was we didn't lock the door. Cop came in. We panicked. We yep. we shoved him over and we just ran for it. Yep. Um. It just it just it it was so amateur hour. Yeah. And uh, it just was a little frustrating to watch it go down. Absolutely. But. And the you had a senator note as well. Yep. Um. So I liked the. I mean. Uh, I guess the personality or, or, you know, tonal shift of the senator himself. Um, you know, when he was talking to Michael, he was the big dick villain. And now in this, like, it's like, oh, I'm coming to, and I've apparently stabbed this whore to death in her pussy vagina. Um, <laughs> what? In her pussy vagina. Um, but like he, like he was very, uh, you know, traumatized for sure. And yeah. I mean, that's, it's understandable from that, but it was like a very, uh, we have made the senator again, so small, now you know it's this guy who uh you know we think is a little bit of tough shit and he's just now the small and significant scared guy and it's like hey we'll we'll take care of it you're lucky you know i think they said it was fredo's right like fredo corleone owns this building or something um so it's like you know we, we own this you're lucky you know we can take care of this she had no family it'll be like it never happened yeah um and I just I love the transition, and it I guess I drew a little bit of the equivalent to the horse head in the bed, like it was yeah. it was that same uh, type of act, you know the 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 one from uh, uh, Vito I felt like was a like a very classy message to be sent, whereas like the uh, uh, you know coming from Michael it was a setup, yeah. is, is is how it felt it came across, and I think that that comes off a little bit as I think the the way Vito viewed and respected people um and the way that michael just wants like the domination over them yeah so it's like you know with michael i'm gonna create this scenario where it's like you have to now submit to me whereas uh with Vito is more about sending that message and making you have sure... a chance to submit to exactly me. and i i think that's a very uh that's a good point i think to parallel the two and make that distinction with how they both operate yeah um so i just wanted to make sure we covered that because i do think that is a significant piece between the two yeah absolutely um yeah that's our, and then like just the funny thing about like al neary's in the bathroom just he's like he like pops his head out and he's like drying his hands off yeah and tom's like mm. <laughs> <laughs> like like it's another day at the office like, oh, like oh, how's it right you know it's just like i don't know it's very funny to me you're right you're right uh all right so i'm in cuba yeah the, the next thing note. I had was that uh, uh, that meeting with all the, the telephony and telegram and whatever folks, and they got the golden <laughs> phone that they're passing around. and Such an odd interaction just in general. Yeah. Um, I was like, why? We're like, why? I, I get it's like that flex a little bit. It's like, I'm going to pass this around so you can all feel the weight of this solid gold telephone. Also, I think rich people are weird. Yeah. You know, like there's certain customs I feel like with, or like when even like not rich people that are like trying to act proper or whatever that I've noticed is like, uh, like the whole, um, there was the, the, the cake. Yeah. With Everyone needs Roth to later. see the cake before it's cut. Well, the, well, there was that. And then like his weird thing about like, it was like, I hope my age is right. I've always been accurate about my age. Yeah. Like, why are you talking yeah. right now? Shut up. Well, I, I mean, uh, kind of that, that mindset with people who are in like higher, you know, money, higher power, anything yeah. like that. I think they value what they say more. Yeah. So it's like, hey, oh, I was planning them to think this was a, oh, how amusing, Hyman Roth. Yes, I hope your age is correct in the cake. Wow, you're, yeah. so, you're incorrigible. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, and that also is the other thing. Everybody everybody see the cake before you cut it. Okay. I don't fucking care. Oof. Yeah. Is it's it? it's a small cake. It's, it's like, this can't be an incredible cake. We're in Cuba <laughs> right now. Yeah. Like, get some perspective. <laughs> this is not going to be the best cake I've ever had. Well, I'm sure there's a, there's a, <laughs> a restaurant that's phenomenal, but it's not the, not because of the dessert. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. So then, all right. So my note is Fredo and his banana daiquiri, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, which is hilarious later when, you know, Fredo's leaving with that champagne and he's like, I'm going to get me a real drink because I can't. <laughs> I, was like, I just I can't do this. Like a real. Okay, this is funny. Um, but I love the whole interaction when Fredo and Michael go sit down at the bar. Yeah. Um, because this is one of Michael's warm moments. Right. Where he's, you know, he just he just wants to hang out with his brother. Like yeah. he's not like 
There's there's no this job. There's no business talk. It's like let's just. How, this how, is very very not Michael as far as the rest of the movie goes. He's just like, well, let's just sit. And then Fredo's like, "Fuck, this is good. Like, why did we do this before? Yeah, I was mad at you, Mike. You know, and his, you know, and, and even still, right there, Michael still is just like, what? Yeah, like what? This is cool, right? <laughs> like, he's like, why are you so upset? Like, I'm, I'm glad we get to do this. Yeah, maybe yeah. we probably should spend more time like, together. But oh, you were mad at me. Okay, well, that's, that's okay. Right. You don't that's gotta be right. mad. It's fine. And then, yeah, then, so his whole quote earlier. Uh, you know, with Pentangeline, you know, keep your friends close, your enemies closer, which is not an original Michael statement by any means. I'm pretty sure that's like from the Art of War, the Sun Tzu thing. Um, so Vito wasn't very original either. Sure. Um, but he did keep his enemy closer. He just had no idea. He didn't know that he was doing that. That he was keeping his enemy closer. It was his brother all along. He had no idea. Um, and then his quote there was. At the party when he finally confronts Fredo on it. And like, fucking kisses him. And he's like, I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. And then Fredo's like squirming. And he's, and he's like, like I don't like broke this. my heart. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, it it's uh, the, at the, uh, uh, you know, they're, when they're outside in that, ca- I, yeah, is that like a cafe or bar, I guess? Like, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. When they're out at that thing. They're having drinks. Yeah. When they're having the outside drink or Outside in whatever. Cuba. In Cuba. <laughs> Um, it was it was just really I guess interesting to see like how much context you can look at like Fredo just spilling his heart a little bit at Michael and how Michael is just not picking up on the signal that's actually there. There's so much trust that like Michael doesn't have a lot of trust in a lot of people and you know Michael's just like this guy's so stupid. There's no way he could do something yeah. like betray me. And he's just like he's like but later I, he finds out he's like, yeah I'll like grab his head and I, I think it's a little bit of that like he's stupid like he he wouldn't do something like this but i think it is a little bit of that blind familial trust you yes. know he's like like this is my very brother. blind like i there's there's no reason why he would do this to me because i wouldn't do this to him and you know i i, I think he just has something stuck in his head about like the the family is still the family you know the me and my brothers and stuff and that there's yeah. nothing that's gonna break that up you know there's nothing that's, there's no betrayal that can take place in that um, which just seems so uncalculated from Michael's perspective so yes. far. Um, and, and I, I think that just goes to show that even the, the cold delivery, like there's still a lot of like love that's within him for, um, for his family. Everybody's got some kind of hole in their game. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I liked how, how bad of a job Alfredo did throughout all of Cuba at, uh, keeping things like <laughs> low key or like it, both him and uh, Johnny, uh, yeah. Johnny Ola. Um, cause uh, when they, cause they, they were, uh, Alfredo, <laughs> Fredo was entertaining, uh, like those senators and like all those other like, congressmen, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but like he's entertaining like all those guys and he's like, Oh, this is Johnny Ola. I don't think you guys have met. And they have the worst interaction. And, right and Mike, there. That was the thing that got me with Michael is Michael. Like it was like, deliberate. looks like what? Like, he looks at them going, like, like he has that inquisitive face of, like, that was fucking weird. Yeah. And yet he still doesn't even place it until Fredo says what he says at the, you know, break a cracker with your cock show. Yeah. Which it's just there's there's, yeah. there's so many, like, red flags that, like, he, he had to have been blatantly ignoring or just, no, that can't be it. That right. can't be it. You know, doubting himself in that thought process. Um which probably just makes the the actuality, you know, that that betrayal coming to, um, you know, we know for sure, uh, that much more impactful, that much more sad for Michael. Yeah. But yeah. Um, my next one is just I found it funny that we never knew the bodyguard's name. Uh, in, in, even in the credits, he's just credited as bodyguard. Mm-hmm. I uh, uh, had been referring to him as Undertaker. <laughs> sure, that worked. <laughs> I didn't, um, I didn't have a post reference name for him, but there was a point like the first time I was watching this. And I think it took until the second time I was watching this to realize like, Oh, that's not Johnny Ola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they were both, they both were old. They both had the gray hair, you know, they both just had that generic white old guy look to them. And so I was like, Oh, Johnny Ola put a hat on. Yeah. Oh, Johnny Ola is strangling Johnny Ola. Who's that guy? Yeah, this, this, this <laughs> doesn't add up. Like it was weird. So yeah. Anyway, I definitely didn't catch that one early on. But um, 
then I have a note just said, good old break a cracker cock. And uh, Johnny Ola is played by Dominic uh, Kenazi, who is Junior, Uncle Junior in The Sopranos. So just nice. a thought. And Ross motivation revealed, um, you know, when he's sitting there, you know, he's kind of giving the business to Michael about, uh, you know, where's the two million? Like, I, I thought Fredo came in with the two million. Where's the money? Mm. You know, and they have the talk about the Pentangeli hit and the, you know, um, basically why Roth wanted to kill Michael in the first place is kind of brought to light. Yeah. Finally, because you're kind of like, is it just a business thing or is like Roth have a grudge? Yeah. Yeah. But I like the, uh, you know, Roth still like trying to be a little bit cool. And he's like, well, you know, if there's two million on this table, I know I have a partner. If it's not, I know I don't. I'm, I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like say, the most defenseless reaction to this conversation. You say something cool and then you're like, I'm going uh, to go take a nap. It's like, I don't know what else you, I'm going to go take a bubble bath. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It, might, it might as well have been that. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's like what 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 is the most like wimpy thing you could say after saying something cool like that? It was like I'm going to go paint bath. my toenails. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go get my nails done. <laughs> Especially being him too, <laughs> like it just be the most like what the fuck? I'm going to go get a perm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! If the millions there, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm back to Vito, so if you got more Cuba stuff. Yep, uh, so just kind of finishing up, I guess, the, the Cuba section for now. Um, so with our uh, our Undertaker character, he was kind of outside that room where um, uh, Roth is get, getting some medical attention in the hotel still. You mean still. Bodyguard? Yeah, when when Bodyguard uh, <laughs> is, is kind of trailing around. Uh, we can call him BG. BG. <laughs> When the when the uh, hold on is there the BG BG boys or BGs yeah they're just the BGs the beach the, boys the beach boys yeah. and then the Beastie Boys it all the rolled into one one character there the BG beast BGs yeah Be- the beach the BG BG Bridger, Bridger, Bridger. <laughs> uh, the Beastie Beach BGs <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, when BGs uh, running around um, we uh, we get these very like Jaws uh, like piano notes um that get played as he kind of like circles a little bit back there you know he, he opens the room a little bit he sees like the hyman roth getting some of that medical attention and then he you know backpedals away because i think another group of people walk in and then we see him walk through and we just get like a and it's just like these deep chonky like jaws like thing yeah and it just felt so like predator like this is the man hunting yeah and i thought um just with the way that uh, soundtrack, I guess, had been throughout all of this. Um, it seemed like a little off, but also like very fitting. I um, no, I dug, I dug it a lot, yep. and um, there's de- definitely oh, <laughs> there's one thing I had to say about this scene where Johnny Ola is walking in a room. I don't know if he's after Michael. It, it confuses me a little bit because he's kind of like looks like he's sneaking in. To that curtain, yeah. like through that curtain rather, um, and then you know BG comes up behind him with hanger. Interesting one to strangle somebody with. I don't. I have not encountered a lot of hangers that are uh, have the strength to. I mean, you know, yeah, they're all I have a lot of cheap ass plastic hangers. They're just going to bend. Yeah. I mean, it'll be irritating. Yeah, it'd be uncomfortable for sure, but it'd but break before you died. I think so. Yeah, even and even those metal ones. I'm I not going to try it. Thin, but you know, it's it's going to yeah. bend before it kills you. I'm convinced you could probably get somebody with a wire. I mean, because you've got to think. I mean, they strangle Carlo with fish line, right? Yeah. Fish line's fucking... I, I feel like, though, you might decapitate someone before you strangle them with the fish line. I mean, I've never done it, but, like, it just seems like just that fine, like, dig into shit yeah property of the fishing line there's probably a lot of physics involved with strangulation versus yeah. decapitation True. but maybe that's where yeah. like you know if you were you know yeah there you go more of a sawing motion we don't have a saw do we have any fishing line <laughs> do you have any dental floss <laughs> we need to cut this guy up <laughs> anyway yeah just walk in it smells like trident and blood in here <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be me. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. Uh, and then yeah, we we kind of get the the Swally events because I think before we do that cutback, that's when uh, you know the Undertaker gets uh, murdered, right? Don't don't we see that before we yes, do the cutback? He's in there, and apparently it's really hard to uh, smother, smother a guy who's having a stroke and is like a million years old. Um, and the, yeah, he, they, they walk in, they shoot him. So yeah. Bye BG. Yeah. I, uh, I wonder if, uh, coming back to this thought now, I'm um, using the, uh, coat hanger, <laughs> um, was an allusion to, uh, Kay getting her abortion. There you go. <laughs> See, it's all connect. See, this is what I told you. You got the oranges, <laughs> everything symbolic, you know, at that very moment, Kay was having an abortion with a coat. Hanger. It was a whole thing, right? You got it. Yeah. Dude, you're getting so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I teach a class. It's every every Wednesday. Wow. That's yeah. that's awesome. Um are we in are you in Veto land yet or no? Uh we'll just uh start the revolution. Alfredo had a chance to still leave with Michael and uh, he, he chose to flee. Michael's gonna kill him all along, yeah. Like you don't believe yeah. if Fredo like goes like do you think there's any road back for fredo or do you think it's just over no matter what fredo does i don't know i feel like it would have been the proper form of submission to go with michael at that point um and then maybe that's just a little bit of a i guess i'm going to die now you know just accept that fate because i the only other option is our fredo's gonna <laughs> he's gonna live in fear for the rest of his life yeah you know what i mean that's just not it's kind of that classic, uh, if you get caught masturbating, do you keep masturbating or do you act like you weren't masturbating? Yeah. No, you, you make eye contact and you finish. That's the rule. <laughs> I think it depends who walks in. Sure. <laughs> how confrontational they are. How physical this might get. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Now we're in, we're in veto time. You're in veto land? Yeah. All right. So... I really like um, my favorite scene in the movie. No, I did. I did think about this. It's my second favorite scene when Vito follows Finucci on the rooftops and eventually kills him. My favorite, just for the record, and you can hold me to this later because I did change my mind on it. I just forgot to type it in here. Sure. Is the killing of Don Cheech in Italy. Yeah. Like the way he does it where he's, like cuts across his body and everything and then Tomasino like we see why his legs are fucked up in The Godfather so anyway um second favorite scene in the movie Vito stalking Finucci into his apartment uh you know gun in the towel towels on fire shoot you know shoots him again like the <laughs> excessive third time yeah <laughs> through the back of the head um takes his money shoves him down disrespectfully i like when Vito kills someone and he like like when he when he stabs cheech and he's just like like he just he and does that little flourish. like disrespect or yeah. disrespectful like flick thing you know like, be done with you yeah you know? like and then he like even did like a second one on the don cheat like he was like <sighs> like oh it's funny I, I, I don't like it i like it a lot but uh that's definitely my second favorite is the Vito on the rooftops um and there's oranges behind Finucci as he he's carrying an orange around. Um, it's like you got to watch out for oranges, man. This is <laughs> the oranges mean everything. In this I movie. haven't had an orange in months. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I found out, I won't eat one. Yeah. Um, My wife keeps trying to buy them. It's weird. I just keep throwing them away. She's like, "Where are all the oranges? I will tell you at a time when all these oranges aren't here." Um. There's that. I meant to look up the festival. There's a note in here. What is the festival? And I was definitely supposed to look that up, so yeah. I forgot. It's kind of odd. Um, we had statues of Jesus with like the dollar bills stapled all across them. All um, I know is that they mimic it in Sopranos, sure, <laughs> because like they're all about you know Godfather references in the Sopranos. Yeah. Um. So the rooftop, and then I love when Vito gets done with the job. Um. You know, shooting Finucci, taking the money back that he just gave him, basically. Um, goes and sits on the step, and we are shown 
very prominently like Michael has Michael has and always will be the golden child. Yeah. You know, he's like, I love you, Mike, whatever the fuck he said to him, you know. Um, and then the Godfather theme is conveniently being played by a man on the stoop when he's singing some other song. Um, it's a nice touch. Like, always the golden child, even when he goes against his father's will and goes to the war yeah. later. He can do no um, actual wrong. Yeah, just can't do it. So, uh, yeah. that's uh, that segment with Vito for me. So, what have you got? Sure. Um, so, I, uh, I, I guess just really enjoyed the sequence, same as you, as far as, you know, Michael kind of hunting him uh, from the rooftops, just Vito. keeping an eye on him. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Vito. Uh, hunting him from the, the rooftops, keeping an eye Michael on him. Michael Sr. Yeah. Um, but I also kind of liked uh, uh, Fettuccini's uh, interaction while he's like kind of walking through the cloud or crowd. It's like very self-important. Yes. He, he's talking to himself almost, self almost entirely. Yeah. Acting like people care what he has to say. You know, he walks up to the... Um, that little puppet show, and he's like, "Oh, too violent for me." And he's like, like he's looking around for yes. somebody to like look at him, uh-huh. and nobody does. Yeah. And I just I love these like ways that we just get to show like the insignificance, you know, because in all the interactions we see of like Vito and Michael, like there's all that respect, there's the eye contact, there's the you know handshakes, everyone the, cares, the shoulder touches. Yeah. It like it's all very meaningful. Because uh, Vito and Michael matter in those people's lives a lot more, whereas um, Fettuccini is just uh, a thug. He's just a thug with a wider jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just liked how uh, pretty much the entire population is dismissive <laughs> of him unless he is causing trouble. Yeah. Um, I just I just thought that was really good to see. Yeah, they do um, kind of talk about in the book how he. Uh, like it's pretty much where what he gets money from is kind of the people he can fool into thinking are like that he's important, right. you know, that he could do something to them, you know. So he's basically the kind of the, just the talker as far as that goes. Like he doesn't really have any real authority, and then of course it's shown by the kids, you know, yeah, slitting his throat. Um, well, you know, and throughout this, it's like homeboy doesn't really have like a posse. Like he doesn't exactly. roll. You know, with people. Yeah. Like Apparently, he's, he's, there's like a higher boss or something yeah. uh, involved, but I don't know maybe if that's original Five Families shit. They never really go into whoever this higher boss is because if I could point out a hole, I suppose, that I just thought of is like, well, where's the repercussions from that boss? Yeah. You know, if you killed Finucci, like Or, or does Vito come know. in and fill that gap of, I can do this better. Don't worry. Yeah. But like, where's that higher boss above Finucci then? Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. So anyway, moving on. Cool. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's that's finishing up my section there. So okay. we're back to back to Michael. My next note is ADT has been around since 1874. Um, I know that sounds like it doesn't belong in this podcast, um, but I was wondering about ADT because there was the sign on the gate. Yeah. Uh, after our little intermission there, um, and ADT has been around since 1874. <laughs> I know this sounds like some sort of security uh, research podcast. Thank you to our sponsor, (laughs) ABT. Yeah, it was called like American something telegraph. I don't remember the middle word. I didn't go into great detail, but I looked it up. 1874. Just so we know. Sure. And, uh, oh, my other nose, Vito scares the landlord and Clemenza is starting to get hefty. (laughs) Yeah. It's like... Uh, and then I, I kind of skip around a little bit because I feel like the next little bit is just more of an observation piece. What, where is your next? Note? My next like, thing is, is your... uh, like Michael beat in that like courtroom. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so just that, uh, everything's very orchestrated, especially with Tom kind of being your support. You know, you have very carefully planned out things to say, but just the amount of confidence that you can speak of like these like I did no wrong I'm not implicated in any of this where it's like a I'm not implicated in any of this right there is nothing leading me to show us you know it, yeah. I just I love that interaction it's just the absolute confidence in yourself um and uh and probably Tom you know at that point where it's just like hey we're good well, right I mean Tom like this is this, this is this is the job. part where he gets to shine because like this whole movie like he's just kind of been suppressed I yeah. mean you know there's the uh the hooker thing and he's 
kind of a G there where, you know, he's just calm, even though there's a dead hooker with, uh, <laughs> if I can quote you, pussy vagina, <laughs> stab wounds everywhere. Um, but he, uh, yeah, so this is kind of his time to shine here where he's just, and the place where he's most confident yeah. with Michael there. So, But it was it was nice to see, you know, kind of that, that come through a bit. Because, number one, I just, I love Tom. So having him on screen and saying words is just a fun place to be. It's honestly um, one of, like, three reasons why three sucked. Yeah. Because no Hagen. So. Um, but, yeah, I just thought, uh, you know, the, the absolute confidence and, like, hey, yes, and no, none of them's going to land. We're good. We're good. We're good. Even though, like, when they leave the courtroom, they're like, this shit might land. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you've set yourself, help, uh, so set yourself up for, like, three counts of perjury or something with, with what's gone out. So we got to make sure then. We got to figure this out. We are uh, we are not fucked. Yeah. Um, and then uh, coming up to that is when uh, Michael and uh, uh, Fredo are talking. Um, oh, okay. So. Yeah, do that. Um, so coming to that is where that's uh, where Alfredo is just like slaunch like in the most like pathetic looking position on yeah. this chair. He just looks so sad and, and and pathetic and feeble, and it's great. It's it's a great way to uh, show him because that's who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I just like the conversations. Like he's just so defeated. Like there's that remorse there. He's like, well, what was I supposed to do? Is like my kid brother taking care of me? It's like I wanted to. I was passed over. Yeah. Um. So like I I understand that. Like I I I just feel like he's he's trying to make his case like why he felt this way. But like it's just so much too little. Too I late. can handle things. Yeah. I'm smart. Like and it's just if 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 you were an adult and you respected Michael in that way, it's like you would have talked to him and be like Mike Mikey. Like I I you want- wouldn't call him Mikey. No. First off, like that's I think that's one of Fredo's things. Like stop calling him Mikey, Fredo. <laughs> uh. But you know, Michael. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I want to do more. I want to be more like, what, what do I need to do? You know, start speaking Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I think like, honestly, I think Michael has such, there, I don't know how to say this. Like he, all the people he like really respects, you know, they kind of do the heavy dose of Italian. I feel like, and he, you know, for example, like Pintangeli's brother, like he's obviously, you know, there's a very professional respectful relationship right there sure where like guy barely even knows him but like he's obviously very he gets so mad when k says the thing about the whole like this two thousand year italian thing and then that's like where it snaps and he yeah. gets she gets slapped right uh oh one woman slap put that in the box <laughs> uh <laughs> one okay all right no moving on so um God damn it. I always take a side note on a point. And yeah. I don't remember so the, what the fucking the, point was. So the Sicilian, was. the 2000 year, like kind of dismissive. So the, 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 the language thing. I yeah. feel like if Fredo, you know, just like pops up with some Italian all of a sudden and he's like, brother. Yeah. Like uh, they're like that familial bond would be there. It's more not so personal. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's business. And I'm sorry. I mix personal and business and I'll never do it again. Like if, if all that was like an Italian or something. Sure. You know, <laughs> maybe it would have meant a little bit more. Um, but I, I, I thought just through the whole conversation, it was just really interesting to see. Cause like I, uh, you know, from the first Godfather, like I was just fully confident that, that Fredo was like a little slow, like, you know, <laughs> he just, yeah. he was just this, this wimpy, just like, like really he was, he just seemed slow. Like he seemed like he was just not, uh, all there or that he was just like this, like little boy yeah. basically. Um, and you know, he, he, he goes to, to Vegas to try make, you know, Something happened, or I guess he gets sent off to Vegas to yes. try and make something yeah, happen. Mostly. Um, and he still ends up being a little bit of a bitch boy there. And it's just like, a, it's it's his lifelong struggle of just trying to, like, do something himself. And that he just can't, he can't matter. Like, he's trying so hard and he just can't possibly matter. And the dynamic of, like, well, Mike, like, somebody's got to give it to me so I can do something. Yeah. You know, it's, like it's, that's such an interesting thing. It's like, well, no one helped me do something all by myself. Yeah, you know, I don't know. But I, I, I and it's almost like the, uh, uh, like the spoiled or like entitled child a little bit. Yeah, it's like I don't like I, I, I feel like uh, everyone else has like had that perspective. Like I need to do this because that's what needs to be done. 
Like, it's not like people are telling you to do things. It's not that people are like, hey, like, do this and it'll be good for you. It's, I need to do this. You know, we're bringing the whole family with us. Look, Connie can be a dumb slut by herself. Fredo, you figure out how to be a smart guy by yourself. Um, no. But I, I just like this a lot because it, it, it seems like it if if Fredo had, I think, like more time and he didn't fuck this up, that like he could have like had Michael like mentor him a bit and he could have had something. I think Fredo just failed and didn't utilize the relationship he had with Michael and could have had with Michael to to do something on his own. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that realization kind of kicks in in this conversation um, and, and probably, you know, start rolling in his head back in Cuba when they were having the uh, conversation. You know, why why couldn't we have more things like this? You know, I, I think of just different time, different circumstance that um, he could have come to Michael, asked for that mentorship and been worthwhile, been useful to the family in a meaningful way. And yeah, he fucked that up. He fucked it up. Yep. Uh, I got... <laughs> Um, my next three are quotes. Okay. Um, so just a, what the fuck quote to me? I mean, I know what the guy means, but it's just funny to me where Pentangeli's in the, the barracks with those FBI guys. And you know, the guy's like, I got you a nice suit and I'll shave you myself in the morning. <laughs> it's like, are you listening to you, man? Yeah. That just sounds weird. It's like, I don't know if that's supposed to come off as like butlery or like a, I, I'll, I'll service you. I will shave you and clean you and bathe you and give your balls a tug. Right. All these things. Um, but obviously then Frankie doesn't testify. So yeah. Uh, bringing in the brother works. Um, so that's interesting. So, there's not really a <laughs> what would you do <laughs> scenario there because it's like well okay so say you're in the mob and you're from Italy and you had a brother who's from Italy he stayed there and he's like really serious he's well respected there mm-hmm. and there's this two thousand year Italian thing goes goes in Nostra and then you you know there's a vow of silence the little Merita right and so you uh, got caught snitching and then your brother comes over from Italy and he's real serious. And then he's going to be very disappointed in you. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you do? Like that's, it's a very weird, what would you do? But I mean, would you testify <laughs> my, I, uh, I, I think I'm built like a coward a little bit. I want to stay alive. Yeah. Um, I, there, there's some ways, you know, it's like, I believe in doing the right thing, but I feel like if I was in his shoes, the staying alive would be the focus. Um, so might, might be a little self-preserving and, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who's going to come for me after that. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of implications there, but I, uh, I might testify. I think I would. I mean, like witness protection, right? Yeah. I mean, like I'll be all right. Sure. But I mean, Henry Hill wrote a book. Good fellas guy. Sure. Anyway. Um, I can handle things. I'm smart. I'm smart. Uh, apparently, Fredo didn't get the memo. He's weak and stupid. <laughs> and then my next quote is uh, when Kay and uh, Michael have their big blow up. Yeah. So you got anything for that? No, nope, I'm, nope. I'm right into that. All right. Um, just Kay, di- uh, Kay's best quote, I think, of you know anything she says in any of these three movies is, it was an abortion, Michael. An abortion, just like our marriage was an abortion. Yeah. It's a killer line. I mean, literally, and uh, <laughs> just in its delivery, but... Um, you got that right. But, no, it's just it's very good, and it, it, it's impactful, and, and really the whole conversation that leads up to this, I think, is just, just hard-hitting. Um, you know, she says it's, it's too late for the promises. Um, you know, she's just very... I don't think there's anything that can be done to fix this. Like I just, in, in this, as she says, in this moment, um, I don't feel any love. I feel for you. no. Love I feel for no you love for you. All. I, I didn't. Never I never thought, thought that would, would happen. Be this way. Yeah. Wow, I'm bad yeah. at quoting. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just too good at it. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad thing. <laughs> but this conversation is is sad too because I, I I feel for for Michael in this way that it's like you know it's he is just so convinced that like like it's it's like her duty almost to just be understanding and accommodating it's like I can't tell you everything you can't be in on this I just need you to support blindly um, and I, I think that's just the hope because uh, mama uh, you know kind of did that same thing 
You know, she was just chill as shit. She's a good mom, and she didn't get in the way. She understood, you know, kind of her role in things, and she just wasn't getting in the way. And I, I feel like Kay just makes it about her, and she doesn't get to be a person. She gets to be Michael's wife, and that's just the situation. That's why you got to marry a nice Italian girl, Mikey. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what did him in. Um, but so do you completely agree with Kay, though? And the like, just because she's so mad at him for what? I mean, I guess you can go like, well, cause this whole, you're not legit. Like you said you would be, and yeah. then, but at the same time, like he's, he's providing this amazing life. Yeah. But I just, I, I, I think that's not always enough, and I can understand that sure. you know, perspective of it. I don't think this is just life she wanted. I think she wanted something simpler. I think she wanted a husband and kids, and they'd come home and spend this time together and all this. And I think just the implications of, you know, my husband is on, you know, a TV He's- broadcast in front of millions <laughs> of people, um, you know, saying like, oh, you're, 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 I, I didn't commit these crimes. When it's very clear that he's... Uh, you know, had a hand in all this. Um, that's that's not the lifestyle she wants. And I mean, I understand that, but it's like also like you you signed up for this. Like you had all this knowledge going into this. Like it's it's just you've you just don't like it anymore. And like it's okay, but like it's just not that easy. And I don't think she has the perspective of it's not that easy to exit this this position, this type of lifestyle. It's not an option. Um, so I, I, I think she's dumb for that, but I understand wanting to not deal with it anymore. I just think she needs to get the perspective that she is no longer uh, a person quite so much as just a, uh, you know, unit of support for the children, basically, which is no life for a person. No, it's um, not. But that's that. That's, I guess what I'm thinking is like, what are these things that she's so mad at him for? You know, like. I can see what Carmela's mad about with Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. Sure. Because Tony's running around just fucking anything that moves, and he comes home late, and he's drunk, and he falls into tables and shit. Uh, well, so uh, did did Michael ever tell Kay about that time he got married in Italy? I, well, okay, here's the thing, though. <laughs> After that, she married him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know that he fully disclosed the whole thing. I, I also, personally would have been a little little irate of but also my yeah I don't completely agree with them but I don't completely disagree with them because think this way you kill a guy you're in Italy has a bunch of mob implications back in wherever the America mm-hmm. <laughs> why America slipped my mind there I don't know um, you're kind of stuck there for the foreseeable future, right? Yeah. Where are you going to get your nut? <laughs> Not so focused on just the nut specifically. Um, I mean, maybe a little, but at the same time, maybe you're just banned from America. You know, maybe you that's just your back. thing now. Yeah. So maybe you're going, okay, well, Kay was fun. I loved her, but now I'm in Italy. I can love again. And there's this girl. And, I mean, we're effectively broken up, right? I yep. mean, I left and didn't say anything to her for many, 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 many months now. Yeah. So I think that's kind of an unofficial breakup if I've ever heard of one. Despite you know, Kay still writing letters. Despite and, Kay yeah. writing letters and just being like, well, he's, he'll be here eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Kay. I think... Uh, I, I don't think... I'm. If you're in an Apollonia situation, are you just... Nah, I have a, I have a girl. Like, if you... If the thought of I may or may not be able to go back yeah. to America and my... Uh, girlfriend, like you're not even married yet. This is your girlfriend, yeah. and you're like, well, my girlfriend, who I couldn't disclose any of this to, may or may not be waiting around, and I may or may not be able to go back. And you're like, well, I kind of am interested in this, and then you get to know this girl, and you're like, hey, 
this is fun. I like this girl. Yeah. And if I have to stay here forever, look at that. I have a wife. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I see value in that, but like the, the way my brain processes is I've done a thing that uh, demands retaliation from somebody. Yeah. So it's like e- even being in Italy, like my head is still thinking like I, there's a retaliation coming. And if I limit the amount of people that I can be gotten to from, I'm safer. So, you know, if, if, if you're, you know, like, oh, I, I, I'll get this new wife. Like, he could have had children. You know, all this retaliation could have taken, uh, you know, come from later on down the line. You know, it's like I could have made my whole family, and I have now all these things that can be taken away from me <laughs> that then demand another retaliation. Um, but, you know, if, if I keep nothing, it's just me, the small circle, like, I just stand alone that way. Yeah. Um, I, I just feel like I'm less open to that retaliation. So you're saying just, like, marriage shouldn't have happened. I mean, because that is, after all, why all the attention was brought to him yeah. when he was in, was in Italy. So I, so I would have just been low-key as shit about banging anybody, and I don't... Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten married. I wouldn't... Like, I just... Yeah. I don't think having... Like, nobody should know anything. And I, I feel like, as far as Michael being Michael who he is, like isn't that kind of the whole thing? It's like, nobody knows what Michael's thinking. Like he just yeah. acts and does the thing and like, he's in control. And then it's like, ah, but he's getting married and everyone knows about it. And yeah. you know, we're, we're opening ourselves up to like these communication channels. <laughs> we're going to do it right. Where, where somebody's going to hear something. Um, and I just, that seems like it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So uh, I would, I would lonely man that whole, whole shebang and just, I mean, I probably would too. Women yeah. Yeah. As convenient. Uh, I would probably also not get married, but I am just thinking like, was he completely wrong there? Yeah. I don't think so. And I don't think that she would have still been mad about it at that point. Yeah. I don't know if we're talking about Apollonia at that point. I mean, she does mention it in the third movie, but (sighs) I don't know that we could talk this one around in circles. (laughs) So we should probably just move on. It's all good. Um, so I'm at my favorite scene when he kills Don Cheech. So, uh, what are you at? Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Yep. I'm, I'm back to Vito. So, go for it. So, favorite scene is killing Don Cheech. Uh, the revenge he's waited so long for. Just that entire Italy sequence is, is pretty good. Um, I do wish the deleted scene is in there where he kills the original two bodyguards from when he was a kid. I think that's yeah. fun. Uh Uh, Because, I mean, for one thing, he shoots, or, um, Jesus Christ, Uh, he beats the guy with with an oar, (laughs) which which is just just hilarious. The most pathetic murder ever. Yeah. Because he he rolls up, so, you know, if we can describe it a bit, you know, he he rolls up on this boat. He's standing up, paddling. He's like, are you, and I'm forgetting his name. We're just going to say Fred, because I don't remember. Are you Fred? Uh, And he's like, yeah, I'm Fred. He's like, did you work for Don? Cheech. Sean Cheech. Don Uh, Cheech. (laughs) Um, and he's like, yeah. And uh, he's like, cool. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, he just crumbles. Yeah. Fred just crumbles and falls down. He's well, just, he's so old. Yeah. You got to think that guy was in the prime. Of, he was a little old. Yeah. When they were chasing nine year old Vito around. Now it's 1927. That was 1901. Yeah. You know? But I uh, I guess I would have liked a little bit of. Uh, I died 100%. You know, I was, was just like, let's just do a drive by boat shooting. Like, yeah. wouldn't that be kind of lit? Yes. Um, and I, it would have been. It would have been cooler, but so be it. Yeah. Um, so I, I would have liked that to be included just because I feel like it completes the scene, and you're in montage mode anyway with this. Yeah. Um, because they just go like, oh, look, we're at dinner. Give these people gifts. Hey, Don Tomasino. Oh, there's family. Okay. Oh, hey, look, we're at the olive place. Oh, oh Michael, you want an olive? He makes a face or whatever. And then he's like, oh, look, I'm at... I'm at the place where Don Cheech is. And then, you know, all that happens. I don't know if it's my favorite scene. It's my favorite whack of the movie. How about that? Good whack. Sticking them in. Yeah. Just up visceral. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, A significant thing about that scene, though, is like Michael's still the favorite, like just the golden child. He's walking around holding Michael um, the whole time. Sonny's still, uh, Sonny's always a fighter from a young age. He's over there and wants to fight Don Tomasino. That's fun. Uh, (laughs) You see the reason why Don Tomasino has trouble walking in the first, in the first uh, Godfather. 
Um, he's in a wheelchair when they're waving goodbye on the train. And uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? It's, I was going to expand on one of those things. Oh, I feel like the marriage sequence should have maybe been... The Italy sequence for Michael in the first movie maybe should have been a little more like this. Yeah. Uh, as you said in that first podcast that we did, talked about it. Um, sorry. Fuck. I don't know. I'm, I'm forgetting something, but go on. Maybe I'll remember it. All good. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, um, I always wondered if, like, the, uh, just in that scene where we're killing Don Cheech, um, if uh, the thought crosses his mind of kind of uh, letting things go a little bit. Um, no. I know, I know. So, I, but I, I was just kind of thinking about it because I, I went back to the conversation that Michael and Roth had. Um, you know, it's like, er, was that at that point? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was between uh, Michael and Roth. And he's like, you know, when I heard that, uh, uh, I guess it was Frank had been killed or whatever. He's like, I didn't, I let it go. Oh, Mo Green from the or Mo Green. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it was like Mo Green. He's like, when I heard Mo Green, I let it go. I knew he was this type of person. Yeah, Frank, Hyman Roth. Yeah, the Jewish. You know, the Godfather family is. Yeah, the Corleone family is Italian. I know. I know. And the whole thing is a Sicilian never forgets. I'm just wondering if and that thought the... ever came across his mind, but. Um, of just the can, that's can I let it the, go? But. It's literally the reason they can't let it go. The, yeah. the whole thing is like Cecilia never forgets, which I think is like kind of like a cliche line. They, that's how they end Godfather three. Okay, it was like I think it might have been the way they ended Coda. I don't know if they ended Godfather Part three with. I'm gonna watch them both again before we do the next one, but I think it's the end of Coda when he says because the Sicilian never forgets, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> it just didn't land for me. No, that's right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. So go. Yep, that's all good. So I mean, that's that's kind of the the thought I have wrapping up there, and then I go to uh, R.I.P. Mama. R.I.P. Mama, aka Carmela. Apparently, she doesn't get a name. That's fine. Um, yeah, all that stuff goes on. I kind of find it funny that um. You know, Michael's sitting in the boathouse waiting for Fredo to leave. Just in this dark, dimly lit. And those kids. Yeah, the funny part, the funniest part of that scene to me is the kids just sitting there with him. Like, and not in the chair closest to him, like one chair removed. Right. You know, like basically across the room. And they're just in the dark and they're just bored. Like, no TV, no yeah, crayons. We're just in shared despair. You know, yeah, just. Oh. Like I'm like I don't know if you've met kids before, but they typically want to yell or play with they something want an or whatever the fuck. Now, granted, I mean some some children I think have that capacity for you know mourning. Yeah, more, yeah. Um, but I mean, so like uh, at this point, Anthony's like mm, seven or eight, maybe. I'm not good with judging age, but. He's probably nine ish, I think. Nine ish, okay. Um, so, you know, he, he might have a little stain of it, but you know, his, his, he might be 11. Oh shit. Anyway, but either way, it's like, you know, maybe they have some understanding, you know, so they are kind of mourning in some way. Cause I think Michael's back in 47 from Italy and then they get together and then this movie takes place in 58. And so if you think baby and baby conceived in 57, probably born in 58, 48. Yeah, 48. 58, and then uh, he's probably 10. Okay. Um, but yeah, I you know, may, maybe they're sad, and this is kind of like a family thing. You know, we, we, we come into the silence, but maybe there was a conversation there. You know, we, we only see what we see. Um, but yeah, it just feels extremely uncomfortable to just, all right, we're going to sit in the dark <laughs> while your grandmother is dead in the room over there. But your my your uncle's over there, so we can't go right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just awkward. Um, but going into this too, I mean, I, I have to imagine, you know, cause Fredo bothers to show up cause he's a good son. I mean, you show up to your mom's yeah. funeral, it's yeah. what you do, but, um, he had to have been pretty confident that like, I'm going to die now, aren't I? Like, this is it. Like, <laughs> like he, he had to have had it cause he exchanged glances with, um, the other guy who I'm forgetting. Neary. Neary yeah. Al Neary. Um, they had like an awkward exchange of glances. Yeah. Al's just kind of like. 
<laughs> yeah, and you know what I mean? So, like, I see that. I'm just like, he had to have known. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it, it That's it's... why he's just, like, bawling and Connie's, you know, like, in, you know, just, Connie's just get, hugging yeah. him. And he's just like, oh. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I love that just because it was just like the, like, we know. We have that understanding. We know what's going to happen. And uh, Fredo, again, just not using any opportunity in his life to be a man. <laughs> And uh, and you know, just grow. He's just gonna be a the sniveling child, and then come die. on, sis. You think you can go talk to Mike for yeah. me? He doesn't say that, by the way. He might just, as well. Have, he though, might as well. You know. Have, yeah. And then yeah, so Connie goes in there, and she's like, "I was mad at you." Which like, there's a couple questions that uh, kind of stem from all of this. Is like, watch ahead. Okay. So just from this whole funeral process and then eventually, obviously, Freddie gets whacked at the end. But <laughs> So Connie's like, you know, I was mad at you. I wanted to show you I could hurt you by taking your money and fucking a bunch of dudes. Mm-hmm. As she a tradition. say all that, but, you know. Um, if you, let's say you're a woman. Okay. Or, you know what? Let's just say you're a dude. Just say you're a person. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, let's say your spouse is involved in the illegal shit, right? And your spouse betrayed the boss, you know? And so then he gets killed for it. You're upset. But are you, you get it? Or you're just like, no, what the fuck? I'm going to be mad at you forever. Um. So, again, I uh, I worry about retaliation. So, this is obviously rational-minded people not having your spouse have just died. Yeah, I mean, so, in that moment, I'm you know yeah. the, the the god of thunder. If I could, you know, strike down and yeah. uh, you know destroy them and and everyone they know and love, um, I'd probably be interested in that. But at whatever point I can get the rational part of the brain to maybe start kicking in, I mean, you you kind of have that understanding that this is the risk, like this is the game. Yeah. Um, and your, your, your spouse has lost the game, unfortunately, (laughs) but you don't necessarily have to. And that goes to me being a coward probably in some of the self-preservation, but I also think that way. So I think I would have let it go, but I, and I also think, especially if you're raising it, like we could sit here and go like, Oh, we know mob stuff. We watch mob movies. I'm just saying, especially if you're raised in it and you know, these are the things that happen with your dad grew up doing you know what i mean yeah. you grew up your dad's doing this shit all the time people come around then all of a sudden people don't come around because guess what your dad had them killed because guess what they weren't doing good shit yeah your husband was a piece of shit you know if you grew up with all that i think you can probably wrap your head around and i think that's what she's finally done mm-hmm. you she know coming full game. circle is yeah. like okay Carlo deserved to die. Actually, he, you know, beat the shit out of me a lot of times, so he probably deserved to die for not only what he did betraying Sonny, but, you know, (laughs) betraying me to a certain extent. Um, So I would say, yeah, you probably... The question overall is, like, would you forgive Michael if you were Connie? I'm going... I'm saying yes. Um, Do you have anything else on funeral before? Because then I have, like, fredo tom questions but uh i guess just the uh like when michael does finally come in and he gives fredo the 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 big dramatic hug yeah um and it's just the 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 goodbye you know the goodbye but not because he does let him kind of stay around a little while right but i'm fishing with anthony and 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 maybe that was to give himself time maybe on deciding if this is what's the move is but i mean i, I felt like it was very goodbye-esque you know he, he does that another exchange of glance michael um and out here he do the you know the, the the look and you know there's i feel like that understanding still there where it's like i don't know you know let's, let's give it a minute but i, yeah. I it, in the presentation I, I just feel like the the desperate grip you know we see like the hand you know wrapping around michael and like just the, this desperate grip yeah um and it, I, I feel like it's that holding, trying his hardest to hold on to, uh, you know, both that moment because he's like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm toast. Um, but also just to, to Michael as well. Yeah. So it, it felt very <clears throat> goodbye to me. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, would you stay if you were Tom? Because Tom gets that 
job offer and then michael's like oh, like giving him shit for even getting the job offer mm-hmm. like michael's for whatever reason is just like real shitty with tom by the end of this movie for whatever reason like i don't i don't know if he's harboring resentment for him because he thought he should have maybe uh somehow stopped k from getting the abortion or something you know maybe he's just mad overall because things are on the rocks with k and you know he's got the children and yeah you know but things if, are just bad and he already needs to kill his brother and he's like he's like things are just <laughs> a lot right now but like if if that was the case though like i feel like we should have seen that expressed like in scenes towards tom or something you know what i mean like i understand like when you know, michael's not there like he has his faith in tom and, and, and maybe he is feeling like Tom let him down um, because of this, but um, I, I just don't think it's fair. And it, it, it would be another uh, instance of Michael, I guess, like taking that emotional response rather than like the logical response that I feel like he's he's had throughout most of this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I just I feel for Tom because I just uh, it's like he's fine. He's trying. He's doing good work. Yeah. And, and, like, I just feel like uh, Michael's just refusing to have that perception of him and that he's just, like, kind of looking for reasons to be upset with him at times. He's just kind of the punching bag because I think he's, like, I think he's kind of got a buddy-buddy system going with Neary. Where he, like, I think he likes Neary more, maybe. Maybe Tom reminds him of him home a little bit, like, reminds him of Sonny. Because, like, Sonny's the one that brought Tom home anyway. Sure. Right, so... I don't know. I, I don't know. There's a lot that you could go into there. Yeah. You know, we could talk about that all day if we wanted to. <laughs> um, uh, fuck, I guess I kind of jumped ahead there because I had the question about Connie and then... Uh, so Michael's eating an orange talking about killing Hyman Roth. That's when that whole Tom shit happens, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a significant orange. <laughs> <laughs> we could just call this episode. We don't even have to call this episode Godfather Part Two. We can call it Significant Oranges. <laughs> That's um, gonna be something. Dude, it could be. Um, you could just start a podcast about like Godfather and all things mob, and just call it Significant Oranges. Yeah. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so. Hagen figures out what he needs to do. Gets his orders from Mar- Michael, right? Goes, talks to Frank Pentangeli. They have their whole conversation. And it's like, it's so lighthearted, but it's super fucking dark at the same time. Because basically, Hagen's like, so you're going to kill yourself, right? Like, this is all this is all underneath what they're saying. Yeah. But the under, like, like if you had it's subtitles, the knowledge is there. Yeah. like an airplane when they're talking jive and they put like subtitles up that like don't make any sense to what they were saying. And they're like... So you're gonna kill yourself in the bathtub tonight, right? And we'll take like, care oh, of yeah, your but- and we'll take care of your family. And he's like, "Yeah, I'll kill myself in the bathtub as long as you take care of my family." All right, great. Let me throw my cigar on this army barracks ground. Hey, <laughs> stop littering! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's essentially what that conversation is, and it's just crazy to me. Yeah, that it's so but- it seems so lighthearted, and even when he's leaving, he's like, "Yeah, see you, Tom." Yeah, but I, I no, you won't. What I what I value in that though is that like that's that's the game. Yes, you know what I mean. It's like he, they both just have that understanding. Like like this this is just what happens now, and there's not the the feebleness involved. There's not the no please. It's just yes. the all right. So this this is what we're gonna do. Are you are you going to kill yourself? Yep. You're gonna take care of my family. Yep. Okay. See ya. <laughs> yeah. It's like you won't. <laughs> You really won't. Um, See on the other side, maybe. Yeah. Um, I just love how nervous Connie is when she's like, Kay, please, just go. Anthony, would you kiss your mother so she can go? Yeah, it's just this just uncomfortable ass. She's so... It's it's almost like she's like... She's like, okay, it's going to be awkward for like a minute. If you don't just go, it'll be like really weird. Yeah. So can you do... <laughs> I just love how freaked out she is when really all it turns out being is Michael just shutting the door. Yeah. And then he kind of turns around. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of turns around like, well, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't so much as a conflict as it was just a, is everyone uncomfortable now? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> just really sit in the awkward, you know? Yeah. Um, Okay, so did he have to kill Fredo? 
Yes. Yeah, you're saying yes. I think so. I mean, what what else are you gonna do? This is someone who has betrayed you, who has let you down on you know some multiple times, who's incapable of making that like mature growth that is required to learn from mistakes. I don't think that uh, Fredo's put himself in a position to be dependable um, and to be deserving of change at this point. Um, so I, I I I fully understand and respect that we we gotta let Fredo go. <laughs> We have to fire him. Wow, that was the worst firing ever. <laughs> Fredo, you're literally fired. Oh, uh, um, so good. No, I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. Well, not 100%, 98. Because, so Michael's so cold, and but I, some of it goes away as life goes on, right? Um, like in Godfather Three, he's, you know, he's talking because there's, it's so bad. <laughs> um, but he's talking to like the cardinal or the pope or I don't know which one, but he's talking to one of them and he's like, I killed my own. Bro-. He's like having a confession. He's like, I'm confessing to you. I killed my own brother. It's like his whole fucking thing. And so he's like, he's got this guilt about it. Right. And so I guess the, is it going to eat at you if you had your brother killed and you're just like, you're just going through life and, you know, obviously all these people that he's had killed probably he's eating away at him as he moves on. Yeah. Um, but this one definitely matters is, more. It definitely matters more. Um, so I, I don't know. Cause I get like, what you're saying is, you know, He's, he he doesn't improve like and then you basically have to babysit this guy if he's gonna stick around yeah right so it's like I guess you can kind of have him babysat if he stays on the grounds but then what about that one day where he's like I want to go move here and fuck cocktail waitresses two at a time <laughs> yeah, cocktail waitresses two at a time I'm gonna go back to Vegas what happens when someone approaches him and he's too stupid and you know is you're not gonna convince Michael at this point that you smart yeah. And I guess you have to, or else you got to have just a guy. You, And that's like, that, I mean, you got to have a guy on payroll to just like make sure Fredo's not talking to Johnny well, Olock type characters. Yeah, it's just that he, he becomes a, like only a liability. He's not providing any kind of value. Um, and that trust is gone. He's only a liability at that point. And because of that, if Fredo comes to that realization that he's only the liability, why would he not betray Michael to try and put himself in some little bubble of safety? Like, there, there's there's just not a scenario where uh, Michael can let him take that chance, or where Michael can take that chance and let yeah. Fredo live. No, yeah, that's completely right. From a mathematical standpoint, you're just, nope. And that's, can't, and that's just Michael, man. He did the math. He knew. He did the math. It's very cold. I mean, you know, because that's the, that's the real life thing is like if if your brother was just a liability, like you're not going to kill him. Yeah. But, you know, if you're Michael and you're just making the cold decision, you know, there it is. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Um, so I really like the flashback scene that he has. Um. So, I'm not remembering where I got this information as I say this. Sure. So, just so you know. Mm-hmm. So, is <laughs> this, I think, uh, uh, like, this could be a lie or is this... Uh... I want to say... I don't remember if I looked this up or I watched it in a special... I wanna, I'm want hoping it was a special feature so I know that it's <laughs> incredible. But I can't remember. It might have been a podcast. I don't know somewhere Tyler heard this somewhere. I heard this. Apparently Brando was supposed to show up that day because that wasn't a deleted scene. Like Brando was apparently supposed to show up that day for that scene. And he did not. Um, I think it worked for the scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much longer would it have been with Brando? What would Brando have really added to the scene? I mean, is Brando just going to do a wise shaming of <laughs> Michael? Like, I, I don't know. I don't think there's really, I think the anticipation of like, well, what would the Don, what will the Don do when he sees him and finds out this information? And I, I think it's fine. I think it, it's great the way it is. 
Um, we already know he doesn't approve. Um, but I love the way the movie ends with the flashback and then Michael kind of sitting there, you know, smoking the cigarette on the property, right? He's just kind of like, because you know what he's pondering. He's pondering all these decisions, you know, um, even back to this earliest decision, you know, it's kind of where we fade in on him sitting there having a cigarette is, you know, this decision way back when to, you know, join the military or Marines, Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is life different, you know, this way or that way. Yeah. You start if, running through you know, those what ifs and what yeah. I've done differently. And so you go back to the first one and then it's like, well, then what I've come to the decision to kill my brother. Okay. Okay. And then what I've come to the decision to kill. Yeah. So, uh, his brother's dead. He's divorced. Most people he started with are gone. Like, I mean, Rocco dies murdering Roth, you know? So probably definitely the thoughts of similar times, right there you know with you know family i mean there's I'm, there's a fruit bowl behind tom hagan there i think there's an orange in it you know i mean you yeah. gotta think tessio sunny uh carlo and uh tessio sunny carlo one other dead person in that room tessio sunny carlo or maybe not maybe not four dead people god why am i Blank on the scene. Anyway, a um, lot of death in that room. That's all. Um, but thoughts of simpler times of family. Most of the people in that scene are dead now. Yeah, you should so very alone now in this, and uh, it's kind of sad. Yeah. So we finally come to the second to last uh, criteria here. If this movie had a baseball card, it would say. Uh, 19 deaths, uh, 12 cigarettes smoked by Michael, uh, seven oranges with significance, uh, three failed assassination attempts, and the asterisks on some of those stats are, uh, does Vito's dad count on the deaths? I generally like on-screen deaths, not implied deaths. Okay, so 18, if you do that. Uh, does Ticho, does Cheech's... Don Cheech's second bodyguard bodyguard count because I don't know that we show him dying because I mean Tomasino shoots at him but he hit Tomasino I mean I imagine the only reason he would stop shooting yeah is because he was shot so we count him I'd say so okay so if you take off the dad we wouldn't want him to survive so <laughs> if you take off the dad then we're talking about 18 deaths sure um a lot of fruit on the oh yeah we talked about this the orange symbolic of the cuban government and um does michael's cigarette in the flashback count because if not then it's 11 (laughs) that's that's picky but uh i it counts it's on screen all right um and then what do you i think grading's good i'm sure you know people would I don't know. I think people like ratings. I don't know. Who yeah. knows? No one listens to this. <laughs> if you made it this far, let us know. Yeah. Content Grace Hotline, Yahoo.com. Um, I'm just saying it's a solid nine once again. Um, it's two phenomenal stories weaved together. I mean, it's old. There's a couple goofy things. Whatever. It's a fantastic movie. Um, not a lot of holes or gripes and continuity issues. Um, but if I got to choose between the two, it's the first one for me. Yeah. What would you say? Um, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. Um, I, I, I like the mob stuff just slightly less than you. So I'd say this sits at probably like an eight, seven, eight, five for me, somewhere in that range. Um, I think I like this one better than the first one at this point. Um, kind of going back through more recently. Um, I just think I, uh, maybe it's even just because I took better notes throughout this one, but I think I also liked it more. So I took more notes and that was kind of my, my justification there. But, um, I, I love just the heavy going back to Vito's side, going back to Michael's side. Um, I like that we had just those two components that we floated in and out of. I like drawing like the parallels between the two of them. Um, and I just think it was a, a really good way to tell the story. Um, and I, I think I just enjoyed it more than the first one, but there were a lot of parts out of the first one that, uh, I, you know, I thought, uh, were better. And maybe that's just because I wish that, uh, 
old Vito was still around, but what can you do? Old Vito is uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So um, you can hit us on the Instagram, uh, the Twitter. It's all Content Crisis, at Content Crisis 1 on Twitter. I don't know what our ad is on Instagram, really. I, it's either Content Crisis or Content Crisis 1. So Probably, yeah, something like that. Do we do ads on this? I guess you do, right? Oh, you yeah, we'll have to, like a I'll have to look at that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to check that out. We're definitely um, on there. Not we're sure on now, but... Type in cons and crisis. Who types in at... Who types in the tags anyway, right? Yeah. Um, Twitter, uh, YouTube, subscribe, cons and crisis, cons and crisis on uh, you know, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. And uh, that is it. Goodbye.